Hello, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. And today we have a new topic, but it's the same story as usual. And we hope today we will have some Muslims who they are smarter, more intelligent, more knowledgeable, who they can educate us about their amazing cult. Uh, please invite your friends, share the link with everybody you know. And I hope you guys, you have a very good time, Christmas time with your family and your friends. And in the same time, you did something good for somebody. It will be a shame that we spend the Christmas, but we did not do one good thing during the Christmas time. Like visiting somebody old, someone have no relatives, somebody have no friends, somebody need us. Do good. So the Lord, the good Lord, will remember you. As you see today, the title is about it is he who created for you all things and you know first time I did read this verse long 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 time ago I did read it again because I said to myself oh maybe here Muhammad is speaking talking and then I check it again and again and again and no it's Allah is talking and it's really, really uh, weird that this God, when he speak about himself, he say it is he. Hmm. Allah speaking about himself, saying it is he, or this is the author of the Quran, he forgot to switch as usual. No, I never been a Muslim for a second. I am smarter than that. Will take me two seconds to find out that Islam is a stupid religion. From the first verse in the Quran. Have you ever heard of a God saying in the name of Allah and He is Allah? <laughs> in the name of Allah and I am Allah. Imagine I start today my topic with you speaking in the name of Christian Prince. I mean, how crazy is that, that I am a Christian prince and I say to you in the name of Christian prince? My friend, obviously, if somebody here taking too much hashish, if this is the first verse in the Quran saying in the name of Allah, what about the second verse? The second verse, thank you, Allah. How in the world Allah is talking and he say, thank you, Allah? I mean, somebody here is really drunk. And somebody here is suffering from mental illness. Praise be to Allah. Allah saying, praise be to Allah. You ask the Muslim, they say, oh no, here we are praying. And my friend, where it says a pray like this, you know, when they ask Jesus how to pray, he says, say this, our Father out of heaven. There's nowhere here it says somebody saying to somebody pray. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Then he continued, praise be to Allah. Gracious the sustainer of the world. Okay, and then he says repeat again the same what he said in verse number one I mean obviously the one who wrote this verses He is he have nothing to say. Why you just you, didn't you just say this? Why you are saying it again? We got it We got it man But somebody trying to make up a story So in the name of Allah and by the way, here when the Muslims they translate to most gracious, most merciful, this is stupid because those are names of Allah. You cannot translate them. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim is not most gracious, most merciful. I understand you might translate them, the meaning, but you don't you don't translate a name. And later we can talk about how the names came to existence. Muhammad he stole them from somebody else. Now, if you are a Muslim, you'd like to call me, please feel free. Only Muslims for now. You can call me. Hmm. So, each time I look at this God, I find something funny about him.
something funny, something weird, something stupid, you name it. Name for me one chapter is not a stupid and funny. This is a challenge for any Muslim to give me a call right now and choose for me the best chapter in the Quran and challenge me to find you to find you something stupid in that chapter. How about that? Hmm? Any chapter, you name it. You have from one to one hundred fourteen. Anyone want to take the challenge? By the way, today I made it a little bit late so we can get the chance for those who work during daytime to be like I mean in USA. Always we are open earlier. All right. So we want to give the chance for those who back from work to be with us. Uh, no problem, any. You know, Act 17 is on life, life on air now. So if anyone guys like to go and watch uh, uh, David Wood, please feel free. Uh, it doesn't matter really what channel you go to, as long as we are sharing the same, we have the same fight anyway. God is good. You know, when a Muslim, he speak about how amazing his Quran, the same second he starts speaking about how amazing his Quran, in my side, in my in, in, in my brain, I say how amazing stupidity is. In other way, I'm saying to myself how how amazing how stupid he is. And here we are. Who wanna call us? By the way, Santa Claus brought me nothing. See, I told you Santa Claus is not real. <laughs> once, once a Muslim was debating me, he was saying to me, Christian Prince, do you know that Santa Claus is not real? I said to him, stupid, do you want me to prove to you that he's real? He said, I challenge you. I said, you challenge me, are you sure? And you know, the second I say to a Muslim, are you sure? The Muslim, he will start counting his words again. He said, you know, um, he said, no, are you sure? The second they hear me saying, are you sure? The Muslim, he will start like <laughs> taking his hashish, sniff some drugs. And uh, did, did he say, are you sure? That's mean there's something fishy now. Uh, you know, uh, he changed the topic right away. You know? I'm going to be my witness. Let us see how many times we want to say, are you sure today? No, actually, Santa Claus is real. Santa Claus is real. He's a real person, exists, and he was a good person, good man, wonderful person. And actually, we, we wish we can be like him. He made a very good example for mankind how to be uh, uh, charitable and they, how to take care of children. But the question here, can I trust Muhammad to be Santa Claus for five minutes to take selfie for a child with him? After we read that Muhammad, his wife, was six years old, who of you will let his child in the lap of Muhammad for two seconds? We cannot. Same time, we say, thank God that Santa Claus is not a Muslim, because if he is a Muslim, he will start giving bombs as gifts and knives and guns and suicide vest. Hmm? So thank God he is not a Muslim. <clears throat> One of the funny things Muslims they say to us that Jesus or Isa he was uh, a Muslim, and then I say to myself, if Isa, this guy Isa, the one Muslims they come with his name, I don't know from where, or let us say they say he is Jesus. If Jesus was a Muslim, how come Jesus did not marry a child? She is six years old. How come Jesus was not accused to steal an underwear? How come Jesus did not flirt with the married wife? How come Jesus did not uh, wear a women's clothes? Uh, how come Jesus did not, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, the madness, uh, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, oh, everything about him is madness. So how Jesus was a Muslim, but he did nothing what Muslims do. Name for me one thing Jesus did, it was Islamic. Like what, kissing stones? Mwah, black stone? Is that, is, that the, is that the religion of Abraham? 
Abraham he used to kiss his stones in the shape of a vagina so when a Muslim he says that uh, Isa or Jesus was a Muslim I mean that's funny how many people was Jesus killed how many women he kidnapped how many women he raped how many child he married to if we can say this is marriage right no it's not about it's not about they are stupid my friend it's it, it, it sometimes if you are born in such a religion and you are ashamed of it so what do you do you play dumb you know what I mean you play stupid once I was uh, I went in a hunting uh, trip and we shot at the fox and this is a story I witnessed for it for real like and I I hear always the fox is smart uh, but I never saw it I, I I did read about it when I was a kid in school and that the fox is very smart so one day we went to a hunting trip and we shot at the fox and the fox he lay down and then you know one of us went to grab it and he did not move he did not move at all until the person he became almost there to grab him from his tail the second he bent over to to grab him the fox start running away and now you cannot shoot at him because we have our friends between us and him so he escaped so the Muslims some of them they are fox they are smart and because they are smart they play dead or let us say they play, play stupid it is something they are ashamed of, but they cannot get rid of. Rid, rid of you know, like it's it's some it's like a glue. He is born of a family. He is like this. His family is like that, and the the the, the punishment is severe if he speak one word against it. So, what do you want him to do? Like yesterday, we showed the guy how stupid his prophet saying that if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. And the women have orgasm first the baby will be a girl the guy he said so what the problem we believe it we believe it now And this is why I hang up on him. I said, there is no point of talking to this guy. He believed it. That's it. I mean, what do I, what I will talk about? He believed that if a man has orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. That's it. All right? No, we don't want to talk about Safiya right now. We want to talk about the Quran and the stupidity of the Quran. Who is a Muslim want to give me a call? And I will give you opportunity to name for me a chapter in the Quran which you are proud about. I hope it's a Muslim. I don't think so. Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, you hear me? Hi, yes. Um, Christian Prince? Yeah, it's me. Hi, so um, I'm sorry. I, I know that you want to give priority to Muslim callers right now, but... Right. I have to go to work and I wanted to ask you a quick question that's kind of relating to the topic, if that's okay with you. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so um, I've been wondering your opinion on this. Do you think that the Muhammad actually wrote the Quran by himself, like the origins of it? Do you think that he actually intentionally um, wanted to deceive people or was it um, something else? Like, was he like mentally ill or was he actually planning it from the beginning okay did you watch the movie it's called the love guru um no no okay you should watch it it's funny comedy okay and uh, the reason i'm saying that because the story of muhammad is very close to the love guru except that this guy he is a specialist in sex and muhammad is specialist in sex and god you know uh, I will answer you, uh, but uh, in order to answer you towards question, we have to go step by step. Um, okay. You want to stay or you want to hang up? Um, I can hang up. It's fine. All right, because you said you want right. to go, and maybe you can hear me when you are driving. But be careful. Yeah, Don't can. have an accident, okay? Okay, thank you so All much. Right. Take care. All right, bye. You know, we know that Muhammad, he did uh, uh, fabricate a lot of uh, verses in the Quran, but I believe the Quran, not all of it written by Muhammad. And the reason for that, I believe, is very simple. 
you see if I take a page of Shakespeare and I assert it in my book people right away they will notice that this is not Christian Prince there's no way Christian Prince he can write English like this you know what I mean so the Quran have have some Arabic where it's really good and have some Arabic which is really so stupid to the point you wonder like I wonder how I wonder why where this guy is coming with this I say goodbye you know like it's it cannot be the same person who wrote this and that and I believe if you remember the story where where uh, Waraka uh, when Muhammad uh, uh, supposedly received the inspiration and etc and his wife she took him to the first person to tell him the story it was Waraka bin Ufal. And here we notice that the start of Islam is started with Waraka bin Ufal. Waraka bin Ufal was an educated person and the Muslims present him as one of the cousins of Khadija and actually he is related to Muhammad too and I believe that the real father of Muhammad is Waraka bin Ufal. Why I believe in that? Because whatever something happened in the childhood of Muhammad you will find Waraka bin Ufal involved with it. As an example when he lost they found him with Waraka bin Ufal. Anything, anything. Muhammad, he became a prophet. Who is the one who taught him he became prophet? Waraka bin Ufal. So Waraka bin Ufal is involved in everything. And then we notice here, the Muslim, they say, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, not my book, saying that Waraka bin Ufal, he was, uh, uh, Waraka bin Ufal, bin, bin, which means ibn, which means son. Son of Asad, son of Abdul Uzza, Abdul Uzza, one of the uh, of uh, of Allah, uh, uh, of uh, of the uh, three daughters of Allah. The son of Qusay. So they are all. They belong to one family. Him and Muhammad. Waraka was the son of her partner uncle, i.e., the father, uh, the father brother, which means who Khadija, who during the pre-Islamic period become a Christian. And he used to write Arabic writing and he used to write of the gospel in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to write now you notice here with me it says that as much as Allah wished him to write so this guy was inspired by Allah he is not doing it by his own as much it was inspiration from Allah and he what what he was writing he was writing a book in Arabic which is the gospel and that is the Quran if we ask the Muslims where is this gospel here we go. This is in the time of Muhammad. Muhammad was alive. Muslims were alive. Where we can find this gospel, which written in Arabic, in the time of Waraka. The Muslim they say to us that the gospel was corrupted. But Waraka is a great man in Islam, and even Muhammad speak of him that he will go to heaven. So Waraka, the one who founded, or let us say, he translated the gospel into Arabic. That's mean there is original book and translation book. So what is the original book he was translating from? Obviously, it's going to be one of the three languages, Aramaic, Greek, or Hebrew. Mostly, it is an Aramaic, and it can be Greek. I don't think he speaks Hebrew. Some evidence, you know, made us a lead or lead us to believe that maybe it was the Greek one as an example uh, the, the Quran speak about the gospel call it Injil and Injil is a Greek word so that will lead us that the one who tra was translating either he you know mostly he speak uh, uh, Greek or maybe he speak Aramaic however I believe it was mix of both which mean there is some Greek words involved and some and but the majority was Aramaic and we can prove that easy you know I mean it's not really hard to prove it that the majority the Quran, the Quran wasn't written really in the Quran was not written really in Arabic in the beginning the Quran we have today have nothing to do with the Quran was in the hand of Waraka before 
there is a process of transformation for the Quran. Even the Arabic writing, even the recitation, you hear the Muslim when they recite the Quran, this is the recitation of the gospel in the Aramaic. If you go to any Aramaic church, you will hear how they recite. They recite the whole gospel, the whole gospel, by singing it. That is not something Islam come with. And uh, let me see if I can show you an example. But the problem, I don't want to use a video of somebody and then they say to me, you know, copyright, etc. Let us see. All right. So we showed you here, this is the Aramaic prayer for our Father out of heaven. And as you see, the Aramaic people, when they recite the Bible, they call it Qura'a, Qira'a, and that is Quran.
Quran and Qira'a. I understand, but you know, I'm I'm not uh, like I I know a little bit of Aramaic, but uh, you know, but not really much. Qira'a, uh, Qira'a, and then now if you go to any church in the Middle East, they say Qira'a min kitab Yohanna, uh, 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 which means reading from the book of Yohanna, Qira'a. That is Quran. The Quran was a qira'a with recitation, with singing. What was he was what he was doing now? It was a qira'a. And as you see, uh, Syriac and Aramaic, yeah, they are the same actually. But uh, the Aramaic, there is version of it. Like there is an ancient, there is a newer, there is etc. You know. So the Aramaic is is a, is a stages. There's ancient Aramaic, the same as an ancient Hebrew. Uh, the 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 Quran, most likely, it was a mix of book, or let us say, kind of mix between Arabic and other Aramaic and other languages, which came later to be Arabic. This is why when you read Arabic, you are not really reading really a language by itself. It is a language of mix of mix. Some words are Ethiopian, some words are uh, uh, Hebrew, some words are Aramaic, but the majority of it is Aramaic. Like all of you, actually, you speak Aramaic without knowing. Each time you pray, you say Amin. Amin is an Aramaic. This is not a Hebrew. This is not Arabic. This is a pure Aramaic. Which mean I believe I agree. All right. Uh, there's tons of words we use around us in the world today is Aramaic, including the numbers you see in the front of you in, in the English numbers. They say to you those Arabic numbers. The fact those are not Arabic numbers. Those are Aramaic alphabet and numbers in the same time. The Aramaic alphabet is a numbers in the same time. The Aramaic was one of the most advanced nations ever. And most of mankind, their science and knowledge is involved with the Aramaic language. Let us say in certain time, the Aramaic was a major language of, of knowledge until Islam came and destroyed everything. Uh, now we go back to our topic. If you remember, you know, there is there is uh, there is many chapters in the Quran. You don't know even what Muhammad is talking about. As an example, look 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 what look what the Aramaic is doing. In the beginning of the chapter Al Baqarah, it says Alif A Lam Mim. If you ask any Muslim, what does that mean? Everybody will start giving you a guess. What A La Mim? Three letters. What does that mean? They mean nothing. But for the Aramaic people, it means something. You remember yesterday we showed you the coding about what Kahayas in chapter 19, verse 19, uh, verse number one, it says, Kahaya Ayin Sod. Those letters they are equal to a sentence, same as here, Alif Lam Mim. So Muhammad was obviously copying. Otherwise, if Muhammad was not copying, he should tell us then what this is mean. You know what I mean? Have you ever heard of a prophet? He is delivering a message, but he himself do not know what the message means. Unless he is a stealing. No, no, Muhammad was just copying. He was just copying from the book of Waraka. This does not exist for no reason. There's a reason for it. But because they are, they don't know what he meant. Uh, didn't know we ask any Muslim what does that mean what chaos mean what Alif Lam mean what there's tons of letters like this in the Quran and you will notice always they are they are in the beginning of the chapters not in the middle not in the end it, it's right away in the beginning Usually, 
they put in the beginning of any chapter a title and that is very normal right I mean even if you write in something uh, you start with the title correct that is the title but imagine Muhammad who wrote the title he do not know what the title mean and that make it obvious that Muhammad is not a person who knows what he is writing otherwise you are the one who brought the book but you are the last one to know what the book is talking about and when a Muslim he says <clears throat> Allah knows best like if we go right now and see the interpretation for this let us see <clears throat> this is the official government website of the kingdom of Jordan chapter 2 verse number 1 tafsir al-jalalain look at this Alif Lam Mim, God knows best what he means by these letters. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I mean, isn't it this is hilarious? Isn't it this is hilarious? They do not know what Alif Lam mean mean. I mean, what does that mean? Because if you are a thief and you copy the book of somebody else, you will not know. You know what I mean? If I, you know, if you like, I have a, I have my books, and then you ask me something you wrote in your book, and then I say I do not know what it's mean. Obviously, you are not the one who wrote the book. Correct? Why Muhammad? Why the Muslim did not ask him what does that mean? Why Muhammad do not know? Because he's a thief. And when somebody is a thief, you have no idea what he is copying for you. This is why Muhammad, he made a chapter in the Quran saying, or he said in another chapter, that there is verses in the Quran, nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. Okay, so what? So why, why those verses are existed, you know? Uh, what 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 is the reason like I mean you see if we click at any chapter in the Quran you will see how stupid this book is chapter 3 verse number 7 it says that in this book there's there is verses nobody knows what they mean save Allah nobody knows what they mean save Allah so why he sent them to us or oh, the verses there says so those can be deceiving so Allah he sent us verses to deceive us nobody knows what they mean and those who have a disease in their heart they will give it their own interpretation but who is the one who followed the quran the muslims so why allah is deceiving the muslims do you see it guys what it says this is not me saying that we do not know we believe in it we do not know what allah is saying I never heard of a religion providing a message and the follower of the message including the prophet of the message do not know what what does this mean and now the Muslims any verses sound fishy and no Muslim can answer he says to us Allah knows best the Quran says nobody knows what they mean so he add that verse in this verse. Okay, how many verses the verses which nobody knows what they mean? Nobody knows. Any verse right now, I ask the Muslim, he find it confusing and he cannot answer. He will say to me, oh, the Quran says to me in chapter 3, verse number 7, there's a lot of verses in the Quran, nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. How this is, can be a religion? Any Muslim? 
You know, the Muslims, they have time to explain to us verses which is useless. The ant was speaking to the ants, and the ant, she said to the ant, hide before Suleiman crush you. And what is driving me crazy, how the ant, she knew the name of Solomon. Okay, the ant, she is warning the ants because Suleiman army was going to crush them. How the ant, she knew the name of Solomon. Look, look, this aunt, she used to go to school and she speak Hebrew. The army of Suleiman is coming. The aunt, she heard the army and okay, we, we got it. We got that. Okay, let us say there's an army and you are an ant. And now you see an army is coming and now you are training the ants to hide. But how she know that this is Suleiman? Look like Suleiman was very famous between the ants. I mean, if I talk about stupidity, obviously here, Muhammad, this those verses is the fiction of Muhammad himself, not Waraka. I believe this is this is the act of Muhammad. This is why they are silly and stupid. Uh, Muhammad, he heard the stories from the Jews. And those stories, he liked them, and he believed they are true. You see, if you go in the Talmud, if you go in the uh, in a, like uh, there's books which is written by the Jews, which is funny and stupid. You know, we don't believe in it. Have nothing to do with the. For us, we believe only in the Old Testament. Otherwise, the Jews they have a library huge of stupidity. And Muhammad he copy tons of the legions of the Jews, and this is one of them. The Jews they used to teach their childrens stories about the glorious David and the glorious Suleiman and all those stories are make f full with stupid fairy tale stories Suleiman he used to have a flying carpet Suleiman he used to have an army of a chicken army of birds army of uh, 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 everything a genie I mean you name it Muhammad heard those stories he liked it and then look and before Solomon Solomon we're marshal the host of jinn and men and birds have you ever heard of this uh, by the way trump right now is in iraq the first brigade arrived to iraq which is in charge of security it was the chicken have you ever heard of a king he have an army of birds and genie and the human being I'm not attacking Jews, my friend. I'm stating a fact. You, you get offended? What does it, what does it have to do about attacking the Jews? I mean, why people, they cannot take it? If I say, so the Jews are what? Like they are, they are God, we cannot speak about them? They have tons of stupid stories. So what if they are Jews? It's a red line for you? It's not a red line for me. And Muhammad, he copied tons of those stupid stories from the Jews. There's a book you can go and download from the internet. It's for free. It's called The Legions of the Jews. Download it. Written by a Jew. Full of stories about the legions of the Jews. It's a legion. It's fairy tale stories. This is one of them. This is one of them. Muhammad here the Jews they say something Muhammad he believe it as long as the Jews are saying that must be true because those are the people of the book they are expert he is a thief he is just a, a clown or let us say he's a clown he is an uh, an imposter so the Jews are the people of the book and whatever they say must be true because they are you know they have the rabbis they have them come on there's no way they are lying so Muhammad he take whatever the Jews they say into consideration as a true story and right away the story will be transformed by the power of Allah into a true story in the Quran and this is exactly what happened to Muhammad he heard the Jews he took the story he put in his Quran and now look how funny the story so in the front of Solomon, his host, 
of birds and genie and mankind and then at length when he came to the lowly valley of the ants there's a valley it's called the valley of the ants is that the United States of ants there's a valley nobody lived there except ants it's called the valley of the ants yeah, in the Middle East, you know, we don't separate things like we, we don't mix things. We have a valley for the ants, we have a valley for cockroaches, we have a valley for mosquitoes, we have valley for uh, uh, you name it. I mean, it, it it's very well organized. The valley of the ants. Actually, uh, uh, I contacted National Geographic or Google Map to add this to the map because I found the location. It was the window of my neighbor. So when he arrived to the valley of the ants, okay, what happened? One of the ants said, I mean, look at this. There's like a trillion billion ant, but Suleiman, he heard only one of them. Look how unique his reception is. One of the ants, like, the ants are like, but by the way, ants are deaf and they are mute. They don't talk. They communicate, yes, but they don't talk. All creatures, they have a communication method, but they don't talk. And here, the Quran show us a stupid story. So one of the ants, the question, why Solomon, he was able to hear only one ant. What about the rest? What, what, what was the rest was doing? Only one ant was talking. That's it. Or maybe this is the only talking ant. And later I saw Muslims, they have an article about this because they say this is a miracle. Why? They said here in Arabic it says, when he arrived to the valley of the ant, one ant and it says in Arabic namla and namla in Arabic it's a it's a it's a female word and they say the scientists discover that the guardian the guardian ants are females and I was laughing like unbelievable because in Arabic when we speak about insect like ant we don't have male all of them we call them namla as long it is one so it's male or female we call it namla but, but because you do not know it's the word is a female the word itself is a female not the object as an example when we say table in Arabic tawila the tawila is mu'annath female but the tawila the table is not a female have you ever heard of a, a ta the, the table have a vagina so this is not about the object is a is a female it's about the word itself so we have word in Arabic which is Muzakkar or Mu'annath, which means either male or female, and, and sometimes it can be both for the same word. In the case of ants, when we say one ant always come as a female, and the Muslim, they made a story of it, they say, see? Uh, for sure, this is very, very stupid story, even to, to mention. And here we notice, that the ant, she said to the ants, get into your habitation unless Suleiman or Solomon is going to crush you. How she knew the name of Solomon? Any Muslim? Hmm? Suleiman is a prophet, I got it. Allah, he gave him the ability to speak many languages, including, but by the way, the Quran says that Allah, he taught Suleiman the language of the birds. Yet how Suleiman is speaking the language of the ants? I mean, imagine I teach you the language of the, of, of the goat, but you speak the language of ants. So, we will let it go. Suleiman, he speak languages. He hear all kinds of things. He have a big ears. He can hear anything. Okay. But how the ant, she knew the name of Solomon. And you will see 
that Suleiman smiled when he, he was amused at her speech so the Quran confirmed that it is a speech but ants don't talk ants they communicate in two ways vibration or chemical there's no talk and the funny is that Suleiman he heard the ant in their language but he understand the ant in his language and because Allah he found this story is so important he decided to put it for us in a book let me make it simple for you for the fool the one who is slow for sure not all of you are slow but there is some they are very very slow let us say I am God and then there is a guy his name potato he was walking in the valley of tomato and then he heard an ant she's saying to the other ant hide otherwise potato is going to destroy you why this story is amazing to Allah to write it down for us what is special about it are you getting my point Allah the God who supposedly who created the galaxies he have stars he have uh, you know I mean look at this world how amazing it is the earth is not even a dust and now this God is so interested in a speech of an ant Allah start writing down hold on hold on hold on hold on what the ant she said what the ant she said the ant in the day of etc Suleiman was in the valley Allah became a historian now and he want to tell us the history about a speech of an ant. This ant enter history. And now every Abdul in the world, he, he, he recite the song of the ant. Until the alive to the ant valley and the ant she said enter home. They the answer, let us go. Suleiman will destroy us. La, 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 la. <laughs> I mean, this is so much, man. The God of Islam, he is reporting for us this amazing story. What is special about this story? You see, the God of Islam, he have no time to write for us what happened to Jesus. As an example, this, the crucifixion of Jesus, which is the most, the most uh, debatable issue between Christianity and Islam, the Quran speaks about it only one verse. Allah have no time to tell us what happened to Jesus. But Allah has time to tell us. Suleiman was walking in the valley of the ants. And one of the ants, she said to the other ants, you better hide, otherwise Suleiman will crush you. And Suleiman, he smiled, amused about his feet. And then... Suleiman, he said, Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, Allah. Thank you. Thank you because you taught me the language of the ants. But Allah did not teach you the language of the ants. Any Muslim here between the bushes can tell me how Suleiman he understood the language of the ants if Allah taught him only the language of the, 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 the birds? Anyone? Any Abdul. If we go in the Quran, you will see in different verse it says the following, just to show you the stupidity of this Quran. And just to show you that the one who wrote the book is not is not is not mature. He's a kid. All right. In chapter 17, verse number 27, sorry, verse number 16, it says, And Solomon was David higher. He said, Oh, ye people, etc., etc., etc. Okay, and then, uh, 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 you know, the story continue, And then we find out that Allah, he taught him the language of the birds, not the language of the ants. 
Any Muslim have a comment? Anyone? Who is a Muslim have a comment? How he taught him the language of the birds, yet he is learning the language of the ants. We have been taught the speech of the birds. Do your God Allah consider ants as birds? Muslims? Hello? Are they birds? So as you see, whatever we read here, it's funny, it's stupid. And if you go down a few verses, you will die laughing. Solomon, he go down in his uh, down from his palace to check his army, and he found one bird is missing. One bird is missing. Who is this bird? Al Hudhud. Let me show you the Hudhud. Hood. This is the hood hood. Suleiman, he have a very special colonel in his army. His name is Al Hood Hood. Small tiny bird. Beautiful bird, by the way. And this bird live in the desert. But he's a small tiny one but yet he is very important in the religion of islam why because muhammad he heard the stories from the jews about suleiman and the hudhud here we go the muslim they put it even the hudhud for you with the quran what do you want more look how beautiful it is hudhud quran perfect Suleiman, he checked in his army and he found Colonel Hudhud is missing. So Suleiman, he said, if he don't give me any excuse, I'm going to make him barbecue. I will slaughter him. And this is how it to be as a strong king. See how he scared the hell of his birds? How dare you, Mr. Bird, to leave without permission of the King Solomon? Hmm. Any Muslim have a comment? Is that a true story? Well, obviously, it's a true story. If Muhammad says so, I mean, what we can say? So, Muhammad, he says here, Allah, sorry. After Suleiman, he was amused with the speech of the bird, of, uh, of the, the ant, sorry. He continued walking, and then one day he checked off his army, and he did not find General Hudhud, which is like one of the brigade, like there's chicken, the ducks. This is the Hudhud, is not there. And he said to himself, and he took a muster of the birds, and he said, why, why, why is it I see not the hoopu? Or he is among the absents, uh, the, the absents. I mean, look at this army, man. This king, he check every bird every day. He have an army of birds. If one of them is missing, he take his name right away. You see how tough this king is? Every day he go and check who is absent and who is not. And now he found that this bird is missing. Imagine the disaster. 
and look what the king said Solomon I will certainly punish him a severe penalty or execute him oh boy Man, did he say execute him unless unless he bring me a clear reason I mean who is of you is good to make a cartoon can you find me better cartoon than this a king who is controlling a huge kingdom he found one of his birds is missing and now he is asking the bird to give an excuse. Now the bird came back and he said to Suleiman, Suleiman said, What? No way. Oh, wow. How did this happen? He just told him, I found a woman. She have a, a throne made of gold and silver and jewelry. And she's so beautiful, so sexy. And she have no hair in her legs. Is that true, Muslims, or I'm making things up? Yeah, because you know, not to have hair in her legs is very important. You know, uh, our women in the Middle East, they they are, they are very hairy. You know, that's why our females in the Middle East, if they don't shave their mustache for two days, they will have a beard. So it was a big problem for Suleiman to find a woman. She have no hair. It was impossible at that time. All of us Middle Eastern, we used to look like monkeys one day. Mm -hmm. True story. Sahih Bukhari. With me myself, actually, once I was kicked out of the swimming pool, and they said to me, "Sir, you cannot swim with your clothes." I said, "This is wearing your fur." I mean, they thought I'm jumping with my coat. I said, "This is my hair, you idiot." I'm not wearing any clothes. And this is a true story, by the way, Sahih Bukhari. Any Abdul? Ramazan? Yeah. Uh, 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 tomorrow I will make a video for this Ramazan. He will be very sorry. Just wait. Ramazan. You know the funny about those guys who keep saying Christian Prince is lying, Christian Prince. They don't even dare to call him. Why you don't call me and show everybody and we read together? <laughs> what is this? He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. <laughs> Oh boy. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call me? Our Skype is open, and you are the one Muslims are scared to open your Skype so we can call you. You know, I called I called the D show many times and they refused to let me go through. We asked for Zakir Naik number, they refused to let me go through. We asked Shabir Ali to, to debate me. He, in the beginning, he, he accept and then he regret. He, you know, he said he's busy with his PhD, and that was long time ago. And since then, he is busy. Uh, uh, even Zakir Naik, we said uh, we spoke to his Facebook page. They said you have to bring with you two thousand people, and they have to come to you with you to Bangladesh or somewhere. I mean, they are trying to find all kind of stupid excuses. We challenged uh, uh, Hijab uh, and his nurse Ali Dawa, and uh, in, uh, he said to the, oh, I accept. And then second day he made a video says I will not debate Christian Press. Uh, who I mean who, who name for me one person of them he dared to debate me. He will go. My Skype is open. Call me and get me busted. You see, you have my books. You say my books is full of lies. And the funny they say they found in my book only two lies. That means the rest of the book is a disaster. You know what I'm saying? They say in my books there's two lies, and the lies is what is what they what the Muslim saying. The Muslim saying lies about Muhammad, not me. If there is two lies in my books, it's mean your your prophet is the worst prophet ever. What about the rest of three hundred pages? <laughs> they are true. <laughs> anyway, do we have any Abdul would like to call us? So. If we, you know, uh, uh, if we take a little look at uh, the Quran, we will find that there is no way that this is a book written by God. I mean, what kind of God? This God, this God, he has nothing to do. 
this God he have no dishes to wash he have no show to watch he have nothing to worry about this God is somebody sitting in the beach in Hawaii and he is very bored and he is decide to write for us children cartoon Ask yourself, Muslims, can you really believe that this is God talking here? Anyone? Nightmare, nightmare in the in the chat, nightmare. Hold on, if he's in the chat, let me see. <clears throat> is he in the chat? Let me call him just for fun. <coughs> Is he in the chat? I don't see him online. what happened when we are like desperately trying to find a Muslim let us see I'm calling him nightmare if he's online I don't know is he online Not answering. Okay, call me. Call me if you are on online uh, nightmare. Do we have any Muslim would like to call? Anyone? All right. All right. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? How this book can be a book of God? What is the job of your God? I mean, he have nothing to do in life. That's it. Is busy now to report for us a story of a bird is missing of Suleiman. And this bird, his qualification is to find women who have no hair in their legs. Anyone? No Muslim. Okay, we continue anyway. So if you if you take any chapter in the Quran, you will find that all of them they are really stupid and really mad, and there is no way that this is words written by God. And yet the Muslim they say to us, "This is amazing Quran. Nobody can write Quran like this. Nobody can write Quran like this." The Arab they were saying to Muhammad, "This is a stupid book," and the Muslim they say to you, "Nobody can write a book like this." Imagine if I today announce myself a prophet and come to the Muslims and say to them, I was walking in the valley of the cockroaches and one of the cockroaches says to the other cockroaches, hide otherwise a Christian prince will crush you. I heard the cockroach and I was amused or amazed with his speech. If I make a video says that, what the Muslim will say about me? How many of them they will call me crazy, liar, stupid, mad, see a doctor, etc.? How this story here is accepted just because it's in the Quran? Hmm? Any Abdul?
anyone. Like the story in front of us, the story of Suleiman, the chapter of the end. Actually, in the chapter of the end, as long as we are here, we can go to the chapter, the, the same chapter, verse number 82. In verse number 82, here we have a very exciting story about a beast. It's called a Jassasa. Have you ever heard of it before? Al Jassasa? Who knows what a Jassasa is? Anyone knows? What is a Jassasa? Who is a Muslim want to give us a call and tell us what is a Jassasa? A Jassasa simply is a beast. And this beast will teach us Quran. It says in Arabic, إِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَةَ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمَهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا لَا يُقِنُونَ So this beast will come from the ground and is going to teach us how to behave and to show us how amazing the Quran is. And is going to have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. And this Jassasa is going to hit us in our face. So all the Christians, the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhas, the atheists, they will turn black because this is a punishment from Allah. Allah, he punished people by making them black. And those who they are Muslims, Allah will make them white. Now, some Muslims will say this is a lie. Let us see if it's a lie or not. We will go to the most authentic lying book ever, Ibn Kathir, which is made to defend Islam. This is chapter 27. And this is verse 80. <clears throat> read carefully and by the way Ibn Kathir in English is totally different from Ibn Kathir in Arabic as usual they lie in the translation the beast emerged from the earth this beast which is which will emerge at the end of the time when mankind has become corrupt and neglected the command of Allah and the change to religion Allah will cause the beast to emerge from the earth it was said that it will brought be brought from Mecca the beast will come from Mecca that's amazing or from other uh, somewhere else as we shall discuss be, be, below let us see let us go to the important part of the story Read with me. The beast will emerge from the earth, and with it will be the staff of Moses and the ring of Suleiman, which means Solomon. Peace be upon both. It will strike the nose of the disbeliever with the staff, and it will make the face of the believer bright with the ring. I say it doesn't say bright, it says uh, uh, it will make it, uh, uh, you know, uh, shiny white. Okay. Until when 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 uh, uh, people gather to eat, they will be able to recognize the believers from this believer. So how they will recognize from the face looking? And here he continue. It will strike the nose of the disbeliever with a ring, and it will make the face of the believer uh, the believer bright with the staff. Until the people gather to the meal, and they will say one to another, to another, "O oh, believer, O oh, disbeliever." You see, until now. The word white and black is not mentioned in the translation. Why? In order to deceive you. However, you will notice here that they could not hide it no more. It says here, it will bring out with it the staff of Musa and the ring of Suleiman. There will be no believer left without making a white spot on his face which will spread until his face shining white as a result see this is it's about being white not shining so it will be extremely white this is what shining here presents supposedly and there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face which will spread until his face black as a result do you see it any muslim have a comment 
So anyone who don't believe in Allah, Allah will punish him and will make him a black. And the Muslim, they say to us that Islam respect the black people. As you see here, the Muslim teaching the Muslims that being a black is a penalty for being a disbeliever, for being bad, for being a sinner, and being white is a reward for being a Muslim, for praying to Allah, because you will go to heaven. And that is a preparing everyone to go where he belongs, which means here, the, the jassasa or the beast, prepare all mankind who they are turned white to be ready to go to heaven for only white can enter heaven and all those who they are black he is preparing them to enter hell for all black people according to the quran will enter hell and the muslim they love to deny and they say oh did you hear about the sermon of the prophet did you hear about the sermon of the prophet my friend, there is no way that the sermon of the prophet is a true. It cannot be, because that will contradict everything in Islam. The Quran says, "Yawma taswadu wuju wa tabiyadu wuju." The day faces will be white, and faces will be black. And this is exactly what is in Ibn Kathir. Chapter 3, verse number 106. The Muslim in their translation, look what they say. Most of them actually, they even don't put the word white or black there. They hide it. The day which faces will turn white and faces will turn black. What day is that? That is the same day mentioned about a jassasa as we showed you, where the beast will come and will turn every face between the black and white, the bent of your belief. So if you are a believer, you will turn to be white. If you are a disbeliever, Allah will make you black. Do we have any Muslim? And remember, Muhammad, he did not hide his racism to black color to the point he said that uh, Shaitan, the one who will destroy the Kaaba or try to destroy the Kaaba, Let us see. Yeah, I will try to find you the hadith. Uh, about the Ethiopian. Let's see. <clears throat> Let us see here. Hmm. Uh, sometime this website is not easy to find what you are looking for but I'm not going to mention it and not show it because the Muslim they will say is making things up <clears throat> Uh, 
You know them. You know what I mean? If we don't show it, they will say he's making things up. Okay. Maybe now. All right. You see it? The one who will destroy the Kaaba, according to Muhammad, is a man from Ethiopia, and he is a black, and that's because he is the devil. And you will notice here, Muhammad, he is making fun of his look because he is a black man and he is making fun of his legs and his shape. So he called him the man with the funny chunks, small chunks, funny chunks. Do you see it? Literally, the one with two lean legs. He is from Ethiopia, will demolish the Kaaba. And the Muslim have a comment. Any Muslim has any comment? This is a weak hadith. This is Sahih Bukhari. What weak hadith? Any any story we find it in Islamic books. It's a weak hadith. Right away. This is Sahih Bukhari, my friend. What's uh, what weak hadith? Don't you see Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim? I hope this Ethiopian guy will come soon. Any Abdul? And not to not to you know not to forget to mention that Muhammad he said that any black animal should be killed. Any animal which is a pure black must be killed. And this is an example of killing the dogs. Why? Because if the dog is a pure black, we have to kill him. I challenge any Muslim to tell me why. No, not only the dogs. Any, any, you know, it says a Bahim. Bahim in Arabic is mean any pure black. Any pure black animal should be killed. Pure black. And Muhammad, he claimed that the pure black one is the devil. Anyone? Bahim, you know, Bahim have many meaning. It can come as an animal, you know, uh, and it can come as a pure, pure of something. Let us say a plane, you know, plane. So animals, they don't have a brain, suppose, so they are plain, you know, but here it's about color. So Asrudun Bahim, it's a pure black. This is why you see here it says, kill of it the one who it's all black. Aswad and Bahim. Bahim is all. Aswad is black. I 
and I changed any Muslim to explain to me what is the purpose of killing a black dog I mean is that the wisdom of God is it true that a black dog is a shaitan in different hadith they asked Muhammad why we should kill the black dog he explained why he said the black dog they asked him what is the difference between a white dog or yellow dog what is different? He said the black dog is the devil. I asked, I said, Oh Abu Dhar, what feature is there the black dog which distinguish distinguish it from the red dog or yellow dog? He said, Oh my son, the son of my brother, I ask Messenger of Allah, same as you asked me, which means the same question. He said the black dog is a devil. How clear we can make it more than this. This religion believes that just because you are black, you are a devil. Any Muslim have a comment? This is, you know, this is a God teaching, and this God is teaching us that a black dog is a devil. What he can do, that's it. And now, if you are a black dog who live in the Middle East, you are a very unlucky dog. Even when the Shaitan he throws satanic verses, as the Muslims they say it's a lie, they try to defend it. You will see that the shaitan he came to him in the image of Jibreel, which was a white angel. So shaitan himself is a black by nature. Let's see if we can find that. No, we cannot find it here. But we can find it in different place for sure. <coughs> All right. This is Tafsir al Baghawi, variant number five. And here you will see. This is for the interpretation of Muhammad receiving satanic verses. You will see that Muhammad here he recite that the three daughters of Allah, their recitation, their inter intercession is a must. And when Quraysh they heard this, they, they 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 were so happy when they heard that saying that in his Quran. And then when he finished reciting. He bowed down and all the believers and disbeliever bowed down with him. Now here the Muslim tried to explain what happened to Muhammad. And they say the following. Uh, let us see. Where is the Abiyad? Here we go. At the end of the page. And it said that there is a shaitan, his name is the white. Yuqalu lahu Abiyad. He is the one who did that. Now let us see how the shaitan, why the shaitan is called white, but he is not white. Simply, what happened, the shaitan, he came to him in the image of Gabriel. Gabriel, which is the angel who provided Muhammad uh, the Quran. So the shaitan, he came in the image of Jibreel. As you see, and by the way, this is uh, agreed upon by Shia and by Sunni. If we go here,
This is a Tafsir al Kabir by a Razi. It says the following. It says, قال ابن عباس إن شيطانا يقال له الأبيض أتاه على صورة جبريل that the shaitan is called the white al abiyad means the white he came in the image of Jibreel عليه السلام so this shaitan was called the white not because he's white but because he can clone the whitening in the image of Jibreel so he came to Muhammad in the image of Jibreel, which is a white angel, and that made Muhammad believe that he is an angel, not a shaitan. And you will see then, and later Gabriel or Jibreel came to Muhammad and he told him, I did not say that to you. And I did not bring this to you. Who is the one who gave you this? And this is why the satanic verses, Allah, he said, supposedly, Allah will delete whatever shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to make a video uh, to answer those people in German because finally they add subtitle for their videos in English, which will make us be able to understand what they are saying and get them busted. So tomorrow I will make a video, but I will make it in the other account, Christian Prince. The one is called the Christian Prince. Do we have any Muslim here when I call us? <clears throat> Until now, we did not see one place in this book, it's called the Quran, to be qualified to be even a good for children. I mean, this is a stupid book. Nothing there but full of fairy tale stories. Any Muslim? And you know, here, if the Muslim want to say to us that Allah, He did that, so He will be recognized, we will be recognized by our color. I mean, you see, Jesus said, You will you shall know them from their fruits. From their fruits, you shall know them, not from their color. Why color should be involved to know a person if he is good or bad? And why the black color is for the bad ones and the white color for the good one? All right, my friend from Indonesia, good for you. Any Muslim can tell us? What is the point? I mean, a bad person can be white or can be black. Who cares? I mean, what, what, what does this have to do with being good or bad? If you remember, let me see if I can find where Muhammad, he said, Hello? Hey, hello, Christian, please. Yes. Yeah, so like I'm not a Muslim. You are not a Muslim? Yes, sir. like yeah, I'm an atheist. Okay. So like I like to ask you one question, like according to Bible. But before I, before you ask me, what do you think about Muhammad, my friend? As long as you're an atheist. Yes, Muhammad. I think he was a political reformer. He was what? A, a political reformer. Yeah, but what do you think about him? Is he a false prophet, liar, or what? Yes, of course, every prophet is false, okay. according to me. Like, okay, what so about what about is, what about the Bible? The Bible, like according to Bible, like how old is the planet Earth? Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? How old? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you because, like, what I what I heard, like, uh, from my my research from internet. Hmm. So it says like it's about six thousand years old. Hmm. So, like, somebody have, uh, like, draw a, a line of the, hmm. um, 
in, in line with the you know uh, the, I think Adam okay so will, let me ask so, you let me ask you what is the older uh, writing a human being like uh, until now we found for a human being what is the uh, the older 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 writing but if you talk about the cave art then it's like uh, probably maybe million years million i never saw such a thing i don't know i'm saying can you show me a writing of a human being what is the older writing and where is this a human being you are talking about exist a million year ago but, uh, let, my, let me tell you my friend first of all you as an atheist and me as a believer we have nothing to debate about because simply you believe in theories and you believe you call it science but in fact it's not a science really it's, it's as much as a theory and i'll explain to you as an example when they measure the age of the earth what they do have you ever heard of the meth method of the salt in the sea as, as an example the salt of the sea have you ever heard of it the salt yes okay, okay. Yes. what is the salt yes. of the sea method or uh, or or science they say well we have etc etc amount of water and etc etc amount of salt and uh, every year the 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 sea will add etc amount of salt a year and then by this we can divide the amount of salt to the uh, and uh, we can find the missing number of the years but this is stupid why and I, will, I will give an example if we have a swimming pool and the swimming pool and we open a faucet and the faucet is dropping let us say 100 a drop of water a minute and then we measure how long this swimming pool will take and then will take us uh, uh, you know to see even the size of uh, of the, the swimming pool or vice versa which means we can find the date if we have if we have the size of the swimming pool but we don't have the time we can simply calculate how many drop of water a minute and then how long it took the swimming pool to fill and how big it is and then we will be able to find how many days it took to fill up the swimming pool but this is if you assume that the faucet is dropping exactly like same amount of water correct and never changed it was like a faucet so this is not scientifically correct because now the temperature of the earth is etc if one volcano explodes just one the whole earth temperature can change over a second so we are assuming that nothing changed in this earth for a long 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 time and we are trying to apply a method which is very funny that based on it we can calculate the dates but who said that this is true you know as an example uh, sometime uh, there, there is a new and actually it always it happened there's a new uh, islands they appear suddenly they appear on top of the earth nobody can even claim it in the middle of the ocean they appear and there's many islands disappear so if you want to if you want to calculate uh, 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 you know what happened to the earth by the random movement of the ground and how many islands appear am I, now that is a stupid of us because it might happen that in certain time thousands of islands appear and thousands of islands disappear so we cannot take it as a random unless we are witnessing for real witnessing same as they do for what they call the big bang what is the big bang can you explain to me it's like um, like a huge explosion okay explosion of what it's like it's, it was nothing and then like there is a bang and then okay my friend like how there is nothing but explosion happened i mean nothing explode of course like it's a paradox like people don't know what like still see what, but, what but look look at this funny science we do not know what explode but there was nothing the second you say there is something explode you just destroy your theory because you just say there's something explode if there's nothing like, to explode how how anything will explode either there's nothing or there's something if there is something or there's nothing Christian, please, like I don't want to talk like about those things because uh, I don't have knowledge about those things and also like science don't answer everything like the religion. So, the, but what we know about like, based on fact? Yeah, let me uh, let me let me answer. No problem. Let me let me hang we, up on we, you. We, we okay, I, I get I get your I, I get your question. I will I will answer you. Yes. I got you. Thank you very much. Okay, first of all, the Bible is not meant to be a scientific book. And I, there is no way that God he explained to us 
how he created the word in few lines because if I want to write for you how the eye is created just an eye or a mosquito maybe I need thousands of pages you see when somebody he study uh, let us say he want to be an eye doctor he have to read thousands and thousands of pages all of it written is just about the function and the design of the eye so thousands of pages written just to describe it what about creating it so simply when the Bible is speak about creation God is not telling us really how he created he just tells us simple story this is how things I brought to you I am powerful and I do things otherwise this is not a book of science and never meant to be a book of science do you think that God really he created the earth and the heaven like this I mean that's it I mean, uh, uh, in, in a very simple story if you want to write for us how he created the galaxies then we need to receive billions of books and we will spend our life and generation after generation we will not be able to finish the first maybe shelf of books God he will give us to about how what he create and how he create so our book simply present to us God and what God can do but it's not presenting to us science and details otherwise this is this is useless we cannot even comprehend until now your science is the most stupid science you see I don't believe really there is a science even though like I, I can say like science discover like a simple facts is like how the baby is uh, generated how etc but science until now is stupid people are dying from AIDS people are dying from cancer people are dying you know uh, uh, many years ago I lost my voice because I was drinking too much coffee I never went to hospital I never I, I'm always healthy and the doctors they start giving me medicine to try things on me and they tell you this medicine if you take it you might have a heart problem you might have you know the side effect right now go to any medicine you buy and see how many side effect it is so in order just to fix what is the sound the problem with the sound which is was just a coffee I stopped drinking coffee and my sound became became wonderful as before it was allergy from the coffee I'm drinking coffee too much not one of the stupid doctors with all their technology was able to ask me what you drink today before you go before this happened before you feel your throat is hurting you nobody asked me I noticed my myself I noticed when I drink coffee this has happened so they give you a medicine and then the medicine will fix one thing in your health problem but will create 1000 thing it might cause death go and listen to any commercial I wish I can play for you some of them you will see how stupid it is and right away in the commercial when you hear it right away they start speaking fast about what will happen to you if you take this medication this medicine might cause an internal bleeding a, a, a brain tumor a heart attack a, a headache a, a suddenly suddenly death blah, 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 blah. and the point is not to have headache so I will take little medicine to stop my headache but it's going to cause my blood to, to, to have a clot I will have a heart attack I will have a brain damage and I will have liver failure and I will have internal bleeding on all of this just to tell me I will stop your headache what is the science where is your science no, you don't have science what we have is a random practice of medicine we call it science of medicine which mean let us try this and see what will happen with him if it was successful we call it a drugs and then we when we practice it we know that there's side effect then the side effect we call it okay this is a must you have no choice it come with it and sometimes the side effect is more dangerous than the disease itself so when we speak about science there is something I can accept to be considered as a random discovery which means after trying and etc and have involved with technology but there's no proof of the rest it's just a theory as long as it's a theory it's a theory you see as long as scientists they discover how the big bang happened okay create a new earth make a big bang for us create a human being
with all the technology you have and you know why you are using DNA to code to clone a goat you are not creating a goat create create a new creature for us go ahead so you know for me I respect that somebody is trying to use his brain and trying to find answers but I don't find any answers in, in atheism you know uh, you know you ask him uh, what is the like an atheist he said to you, you we used to be ape okay why we still have ape they speak about the theory of evolution okay uh, you know evolution can be true but this is like a, a limited change in a human being can or, or, or any animal like as an example uh, those who live in mountains they have a big chest bigger chest and uh, because simply they need to breathe more air for they have less oxygen that is evolution i believe in but not we used to be we used to be monkeys and became a human that's stupid if we have similarity in design that because we, because we have one creator it's like when we you know when you bring an expert you see him a paint and you say oh this is must be this is cannot be made by Picasso why? Because because so have different way of painting. So we have similarity of all creatures because it's done by one creator. Are we clear, guys? We have a fingerprint of one author. The fish. Please stop causing science everything you are able to do our product of science uh, uh, okay let, uh, let me show you this uh, this uh, statement stop co uh, causing science everything you are able to do our product of science not really if you are talking about science and machines and internet I believe that those are exist but we just discover them and I will explain to you did we make electricity or electricity is already exist it is exist but we do not know about it as simple as that today you say we are generating electricity the fact you are not you are using you, you study what make electricity uh, uh, or electrons move how we can move it how we can cause it to move but the electron is there you did not create electrons you did not create neutrons so it's very silly of you to say everything i am using is because of science no science is not the one who created the chicken science is not the one who created the air i can live without internet but i cannot live without air so it's very stupid of you to think that everything is created by science and that is very naive Science is something different from what is necessity. Today, necessity is different from what used to be before, but still we can survive without science. Yes, I am not man of science, and I don't want to be. You are not a man of science. <laughs> Why you don't call me? Call me, and let us see what science brought to us. What science brought to us? stupid talk you know science brought to us TV internet etc but you will notice that all of those is more of a discovery not really a science we discover how the nature around us function as an example did we create the radio wave or the radio wave was exist before we we discover it we discover it we did not create the radio wave is that correct guys we do not it's, it's, it exists but we do not know about its existence so what we call science is discovering what we have already we did not make it happen the ability of sound to be transformed or energy to transform by waves is not who it's not us who made it happen it's happening for for a long time but we never heard of it we do not know what it is 
then a human being was able to create a machine and this is what you call it science was able to discover it but does not mean we made it so people are mixing between <clears throat> what is science and what is creation Science simply is learning about things around us. Is that correct, guys? That's what is science is about. We are learning about things around us. We learn how to fly to the space. But the space is empty before we are able to go there. But we learn how to use the nature around us so we can escape the gravity of the earth but we did not stop the gravity the gravity is still there we did not change the element of the space or the earth all what we did we calculated numbers of how we can overcome the element and use another element so we can escape the zone of the earth so we created an engine which is more powerful than the gravity will push us in the opposite direction as simple as that This is what you call it science. But we were not able to create anything. It will be really amazing if you are if your science can create for you uh, after you die, they can bring you back from death and they can put you together. Or if you ask a scientist, if you pay him to uh, you know to bring you back to life. Um, or let us say to create someone like you a copy of you without using any material of the earth exist or in, in the space you know he go to his machine he clicks some bombs and then bingo we have you inside the microwave even the microwave you are using is using what is already ex exist All right Anyway, do we have any Muslim on a call? Anyone? Anybody? Any Muslim want to call me? And by the way, I'm not against science, but uh, you know, I don't like stupidity of those who uh, worship science. My friend, time will come and they will put you in a box and they will bury you under the ground. And this is my challenge to you. Let science help you. Don't you have science? I want to see science bringing you back to life and you live forever. Let us see your science. After all the technology you have, you cannot even stop yourself aging. The one, the founder of Apple, he died by stupid cancer. And all his money could not help him. And all the scientists of the world, they could not bring him back to life. This guy, he can own half of America. Yet all his money and all the technology and all the doctors, they could not find a stupid cancer. This is what science is. Where is your science? You will die like a rat, Mr. Science. Anyway. Do we have any Abdul when I call us? Anyone?
even one Muslim as you see in the front of us in the hadith here here is the real science the science of Islam Allah he created the black people from the shoulder of Adam the left shoulder and he decided to send them to hell as you see someone saying that Catholic they invented Islam I mean this is a stupid statement I heard it many times before my friend nobody fought Islam as much as the Catholic and whoever said that to you is a donkey the one who said to you that Catholic they created or invented Islam, he is a certified donkey. He des he des he deserve a certification from a Christian prince himself, with ten time bigger signature, and a stamp of my shoes. Give me his name. The one who said to you that that the Catholic they invented Islam. Give me the name of that donkey, please. Please. Actually, nobody ever fought Islam as much as the Catholic. This is why the Muslims they consider the biggest enemy for them is the Catholic. This is why you see the Muslim they say a Catholic, a Catholic he converted to Islam is like saying God Himself, like Catholic brother, Catholic you believe it, brother, brother, a Catholic brother, brother. There did the breed and the Catholic brother. He became a Muslim. It's like saying God. Because for them, this is like, man, stop being stupid. Who are the crusade then? They were Hindus? Huh? If the Catholic is the one who invented Islam, who is, I, I saw one, he is from, uh, what is called? Uh, Seven Adventist. You know, very. Uh, they have a very a lot of uh, wrong teaching, and they have a donkey who was on the stage teaching them. He was saying that Khadija, she was a Catholic nun. Khadija, she was a Catholic nun. Just to let you know, by the way, Khadija, she have two husbands before Muhammad, and she have tons of babies and children, but yet she was a nun. Catholic nun, not just a nun, she is a Catholic nun. Mm -hmm. And nobody of those donkeys listening to this guy ask him, Where do you get this from? Can you show us the reference? And suppose you have a PhD, and the second you have a PhD, who's asking you? Who's going to ask you? You have a PhD, that's it. You can say whatever you want. All right? Madness, stupidity. Actually, until now, the Catholic in the Middle East are very small minority, because the majority of the uh, uh, of the Middle Eastern Christians are Orthodox. Specifically, either Syriac Orthodox or a Greek Orthodox, and the majority are Greek Orthodox. And the majority of the Middle Eastern who they are in Africa, they are mostly connected to the Syriac Orthodox, like the Coptic Church. And the Ethiopian church. And by the way, when Muslim they say to you the early father churches did not teach about the Trinity, that would be stupid. Because uh, in case you do not know, one of the oldest churches in the world was not only in Syria, uh, went all the way to India. One of the apostles of Jesus. He went all the way to India and he established an Orthodox Church. And we have the Ethiopian Christians, we have the Egyptian Christians. So Christianity is spread all over, and there's nobody can control that. You see, when they say to you that Constantine he gathered all the church leaders and he forced them to believe in the Trinity, but Constantine cannot do not control the whole earth. Constantine is a king for the Roman. He is not a king for the Persian. He is not a king for the Indian. He is not a king for the Ethiopian. But you will notice that all the other churches still believe in the same thing. 
Are we following with me, guys? Do the king of the Roman have a power over India? He cannot. He don't. But they have they have the same belief as we do. They believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the apostle of Jesus who went there is the founder of that church. So this is from the early Christian churches. This is why you will notice that those Indian, imagine Indian, Indian in India. When I say Indian, I'm not talking about America. Indian in India, in their churches, they are praying in Aramaic. Why? Because the apostle of Jesus, he went there and he taught them the Bible in Aramaic. Do we have any Muslim here? <clears throat> Anyone? Anyone have a comment about what is in the screen? Yeah, Apostle Thomas. In Arabic, we call him Tuma, or in Aramaic, Tuma. You're right. And the one who taught the Egyptian Christianity is Apostle Marcos. Mark. So we have from the early Christianity, early Christians, uh, Christianity spread all over and there is no way anyone can control anything you see when the Muslim they say to us that uh, uh, the, the the Jews they change the, the Torah the Jews and then but the Christians they have the Jews Torah and they accept it I mean how you can make all the Jews accept to corrupt one book and yet they, they accept to corrupt all of them you know what I mean I mean, how you can make all the Jews agree to corrupt their book? And why in the world anyone who believe in God want to corrupt his book? If we ask a Muslim, are you willing to corrupt your book? He will say no. Okay, why the Jews would do that then? You think you are a good guy and they are bad guys? Why the ones who die for the sake of Jesus? They were crucified. They were killed. They were slaughtered. They will change the Bible. Why? Why? And you know, not only this, the change you will see that the difference between Christianity and Islam, the Bible and the Quran is far beyond the change. I mean, Muhammad, he even cannot quote the name correctly. Mary is the daughter of a guy, his name is Umran. Who's Umran? I mean, why the Christian even will change the name? What the accomplishment the Christian will do from changing the name of the father of Mary? You tell me. Do the Christians who have a book 600 years before Muhammad know that Muhammad is an idiot. He cannot quote the name correctly But let me tell you what happened the stupid Muhammad. He thought that Umran which is Umram in the Old Testament Umram He can't even quote the name correctly. So he, he thought that Mary she is the sister of Aaron the sister of Moses So now he called the father of uh, uh, Moses. He is the same father of Mary But Mary who not Mary Miriam the sister of Aaron. No Mary, the mother of Jesus, according to Muhammad, she is the sister of Aaron. So Umram became Umran. For those who do not understand what I'm saying, let me type for you on the screen. Muhammad, in the Quran, as usual, he always do poo -poo. He is special specialized in poo-poo. So he come with a new name we never heard of. That is Umran. I will type it first in Arabic. But the original name is Umran. What is the difference between the two names? The wrong name is the first one in the right. This is letter noon n oops the real name is 
end with the letter M. So Muhammad, he copied the name, but he copied it wrong. So Umran with M became Umran with N. This is a stupid mistake, number one. Number two, Umran is the father of Musa's. Musa's father. The same Umran, Umran is the father of Mary. And then in the miraculous way, Muhammad, he said that Mary is the sister of Aaron. Sister of But Aaron is the brother of Moses. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a stupid prophet like this before? Why Muhammad he made such a mistake? First of all, because he don't speak Hebrew. He caught the name wrong. He heard the Jews saying Umram. He thought it is Umran. That's mistake number one. So Umran become Umran with noon. Then he heard the Jews speaking about Aaron. He have a sister. Her name is Maryam. And this is exactly how the name of Mary, the mother of Jesus in Arabic, came. So in the Old Testament, it says that Maryam is the sister of Aaron and the sister of Moses. So Muhammad, he thought that this is the same Maryam, the mother of Jesus, is the same mother of the same sister of Aaron and Moses. Do you want more proof that Muhammad is a false prophet? Have you ever heard of a prophet? He can't even quote a name correctly. Yeah, I, I heard of uh, Prophet Muhammad Hijab who said that Elijah means God is with us. This is exactly what Muhammad is. God is with us. Hijab, you know. Uh, let me teach you Arabic and teach you Hebrew, okay? Uh, Elijah means God is with us. And the Muslim like, wow, wow, brother, wow. The Muslim, they were very impressed. Like, wow, man, how he knew? This guy suddenly he speak Hebrew, he is schooling everybody in Hebrew, and he's schooling us in Arabic, and Allah he pray for, but he don't pray to. <laughs> Do we have an Abdul? Any Muslim? Not even one Muslim today? Why? Where, where, where is everybody? Why we are dry today? Hmm? Any Muslim would like to call us? No? Christians enslave people. Are you really dumb? My, my friend, no, we are not. First of all, 
in order for me to enslave people and if I am following Jesus practice then I was right but you will notice my friend that Christians you know who do wrong things they can exist everywhere and that that's had nothing to do with Jesus as an example why how many slave Jesus he owned how many slaves Jesus he owned Muhammad he owned tons of slaves and he raped them and he have sex with them how many slaves Jesus he owned how many slave Peter he have how many slave uh, Paul he have how many slave all the apostles of Jesus they have those are the real Christians our early fathers and none of them own slaves if Christianity is based on slavery then why we don't have slaves why Jesus himself don't have any but Muhammad he is a slave owner buyer and, and seller even he received gifts as a slaves Not long time ago, here in America, people they used to own slaves. But is that is that the order of uh, of Jesus says to the? And not only that, the slaves who they own them, they are Christians. How you own a? Not only they are own slaves, they are owning Christian slaves. So if you are saying to me, Christians they own slaves, you forgot that the the slave themselves they are Christian too. And this is showing me how dishonest you are. How come you mention that who own a slave, but you don't mention the slaves? And by the way, all the slaves which own in the West captured and sold by Muslim. You don't want to talk about that? Where the white European they got their slaves from? From North Africa, Morocco, Libya, Algeria. They go in expedition inside Africa. They capture black poor people from the desert and they sell them to the white man. Until now, the countries of control of slaves are North Africa. Until now, there's tons of slaves in Libya and they rape them every day. Until now, the biggest country of slavery is called Mauritania, where more than 80% of the population are still slaves owned by owners. Dishonesty. <clears throat> who is the one who captured the slave? Ask your grandfather who is the one who sold him to the Western? The Muslim Arabs, the white Arabs. My grand grand grandfather. He captured your grand grandfather and he sold him to the white man. Are you there? You can go right now and search in Google, Prophet Google, and you will find all the reference. You know, uh, there is a story of, uh, of a white man from Europe. He went to Brazil and he asked for a guide you know he wanna he make like he's doing research about people who live in the jungle who people do not know much about them until now so he asked one of the local native from the tribes to go with him so he can guide him in the way each time they have a break or to eat or etc this guy he have a small book in his pocket he take it and he start reading from it so the european man said to him what, what are you reading what is the book you are reading he said to him, um, this is the Bible. The white man said, what? You read this? We stopped reading this from a long time. Come on. You are smarter than this. The Brazilian guy here did not respond and didn't even bother. He kept reading his book. And then one day they arrived to a cave and the cave was full of bones of a human being. And there is an old like uh, cooking material. It's like a kitchen. So the, the Brazilian, he started explaining to the white man that here, my tribe, 
they use to capture a human and we eat them the white man he said so where is everybody now why they don't eat it they didn't do that no more how come the Brazilian man he said do you remember the book you made fun of during our trip he said yeah the Bible he said well if not that book we will be you will be in our dish right now <laughs> If not that if not that book which you are making fun of you will be today our soup so the stupid European one, man he was making fun of the Brazilian man for reading the Bible and now the Brazilian they are showing him how stupid he is you made fun of me for reading this book if not this book you will be right now my meal you will be my McDonald So this is the word of Jesus, my friend. This is what change it does to our life. The one who's asking me about the age of the earth, you want to see the miracle of Jesus? Look how we change. You will see someone, he go to, to jail. He is a criminal. He is a killer. He is a violence man. He became, he accepted Jesus. He became a very peaceful person. That is a miracle. Me, myself, I used to be a person who looked for a fight. I look for it. I wasn't a bad person, by the way. But I look, I look for a fight. If I see, if I see uh, like uh, three guys fighting with one guy, even I do not know who is that guy. I believe this is not fair. I joined the fight with the one guy. I don't know even if he's a Christian, he's a Muslim. I don't care. I jump in the fight. After we finish the fight, the guy he asked me, "Do I know you?" I said, "No." <laughs> do I know you? Like he wondered, like who is this guy? He joined us, defending me. You know, like you know, I don't know you. I don't care. So we change. The Bible change us. Now I don't really like violence, and I don't like to fight with anyone. Uh, so you can go and see tons of stories. Do you see uh, 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 our our brother Amir from Germany? This guy, he was in jail. Literally, he was a criminal. And look what the Bible to his to, you know did to his life. So, you know, we have a proof that this book is an amazing book. Paul himself used to go after the Christians. He want to kill them. So what happened to Paul? The fighter, the warrior, the one who go and want to fight and want to kill. What happened? You talk about science, if science will make you better, you know, science will destroy humanity. You see, maybe science for now is making us having a more comfortable life, but time will come and science will burn the whole earth. Your science will bring nothing but evil upon you. Right now, as we speak, Russia have a, have a, have a, a weapon which is five times faster than the light. They have weapon, they can destroy any continent in two or three explosion only by making the ocean cover that continent by water, by creating tsunami, without even nuking you. Time will come and a human being will be sorry for his science. We have weapon who can kill people by ethnic groups, which mean it's a bacteria will kill only certain kind of people. Imagine.
So maybe you are proud about science today, but tomorrow you will be sorry for this science. I believe time will come and this earth will be burned. You call it judgment day, you call it whatever you want. You don't believe in God, it's up to you. But the human being is destroying himself. You see, there is many jobs is going to disappear. As an example, pilot for airplane. I believe time will come. Everything will, will the airplanes will fly by computers. There's no there's no pilot. Same as the fighters, there's no pilot for fighters. Right now we have a drone. They go and they hit somebody in the middle of nowhere, and you are sitting in your room like as, as if you are playing a game. It's literally a game. This is now. So imagine what would happen after 500 years from now. So a human being is making science, or what they call it science and technology, but this technology is not going to help him really much as much as going to, to bring destruction. What now? What if we have a leader of those great countries, powerful countries? He's a crazy man like Hitler. That's it. The earth is over. Just elect one of them like Hitler. The earth is over. And if, if a war, you know, erupt between those two great countries, let us say Russia and America or etc. and NATO, it's not going to be Russia and America only. The whole earth will be shish kebab. No, actually, Trump is a very peaceful person compared to the rest of them. You guys, you have no idea. You see, people, they accuse Trump of things he don't have it. Trump is not a warrior. Here we go. He will withdraw from Syria, his army. When actually, if I am him, I should stay. The one always who, 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 uh, who seek war and destruction is liberals. Like Lenin, Karl Marx. Uh, uh, Obama so in the time of Obama he donated for for ISIS to grow he helped him to grow he would draw the USA army so ISIS can grow on purpose they made Egypt collapse the Egyptian government of Egypt so the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood would take over this is the plan but all what you hear in the news that Trump is an evil man he is a foolish he's a crazy he's a stupid the fact he is smarter than all of them Since he came, they accuse him that he is going to have war with Korea. When he shake hands with the president of Korea, they accuse him to be coward. Look at this. In the beginning, they say this guy is a crazy. He is going to cause us to have war with Korea. Then this guy was able to force the president of Korea to, to seek peace. And because he went to shake hands with him, everybody in the liberal world start making fun of him. More than 30 years, nobody was able to force this country to do that. He did. Without war. He destroyed ISIS. But anyway, you know, Western people are really people of TV. Whatever they see in TV, they believe it. They are cartoon nation, you know. Before I come to America, and honest to my God, before I come to America, I thought Americans are very educated people. I was thinking about myself, I am Middle Eastern, and really look at, what, look at ourselves, you know, we are behind in everything. And when I go to America, those Americans are advanced in everything. And so I was expecting America to be like a great nation full of educated people. I found that America is a great and a lot of great people here. But at the same time, I discovered that America is suffering badly from ignorance. I have a neighbor after 11 years of 9 11, he did not know if Osama bin Laden is a Muslim or not. Welcome to America. If you ask them where is Syria located, they do not know. If you ask American, many of them, what is the what what, what is the capital of America, they do not know. <laughs> There's a guy, I forgot his name. He make videos in YouTube. They are funny. He asks questions like, uh, "Why, why we have uh, the Fourth of July?" They don't know. Many of them do not know. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> American. Welcome to America.
uh, I mean, yeah, it's amazing. It's like the stupidity is beyond imagination. Yeah, Mark dies, Mark dies, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, uh, those liberals, like in the other day, I saw a video. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, a Muslim woman, she refused to sign a, 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 a pledge not to be caught Israel in Texas. And the liberals, they are making this big story. How they are forcing a Muslim woman to sign such a thing. This is a shame. This is America. This is not Israel. But they don't understand that this is not about democracy. This woman, she is not going to sign. She is not even allowed to sign a pledge to America. The Quran says in chapter 5, verse number 51, take not Christians and Jews as a friends and protectors. This is not about Israel, you idiot. So they start attacking this school. How you do that? This school exposed those people by making them sign this paper and they refuse. But do you think they are allowed to pledge to America too? The Quran is so clear. You cannot take a Christians and Jews as a friends. This is not about Israel. Did you ask yourself why they will not sign to Israel? What is what is the is that because the Israeli occupy the land? Even the Quran, even the Quran confirm that this is the land of the Jews. This is the land of the Jews. No Muslim can say that this is not the land of the Jews in their book. In the same chapter, chapter 5, verse number 20 says, Remember, Musa said to his people, Oh, my people, call the remembrance, remembrance of the favor of Allah into you when he produced a prophet among you and made you king, and he gave you what not given to any among you. Oh, my people, enter the holy land which Allah has assigned into you. Do you see it? Even the Quran, by the way, the, the Quran never mentioned the word Palestine. The Quran never mentioned the word Palestinian. The Quran confirmed that the Holy Land belonged to the Jews. And as you see in the front of your eyes, I'm not making things up. Why the Muslims are against Israel? Simply because they are Jews, not because of the land. If Erdogan, Erdogan now he occupy almost you know 15% of Syria. Have you ever heard of any Muslims going crazy? No. If Erdogan occupies Syria, none of the Muslims will be upset. The Albanian they control Egypt for more than a thousand years. Not a single Arab or even Egyptian king. And none of the Muslim Egyptian complain. Why? Because they are Muslims. The Ottoman, they control most of the Middle East. And the Arab Muslims, they were subdued like sheep. Why? Because they are Muslims. When Saddam Hussein, he used chemical weapon, killing tens of thousands of Kurdish. Not even a single Muslim went in the street. Why? Because he's a Muslim. When you are a Muslim, you have a license to kill all mankind, including Muslims. But if you are a Trump, Trump, he signed a ban list, which is signed by Obama. The whole world go against him and say Trump is a racist. I never heard of anyone saying Saddam Hussein was a racist. And Trump was signing the same paper signed by Obama before him. Nobody spoke about it when Obama he signed it. No, the, the Muslims are not the problem. The problem is the, the, the liberals, you see. The, the biggest problem in the West we have is not the Muslims. It is the stupid liberals. Liberals are people who dig for their grave. If the Muslim took over your country, you are the first one to be buried, not us. Any Abdul?
defend another one uh, castleism okay you see <clears throat> those who hate us Christians to be united they cannot take it there's nothing is called Catholicism and nothing is called the Protestant and nothing is called Orthodox those names are not known by Jesus and this is what we defend we Christians we are united whoever believe in the Messiah the Lord the Savior he is a Christian for me you don't like it get lost and the Catholic are a Christian like me I am NOT a Catholic I don't agree with many things they have but still I find them very wonderful Christians if everyone break the command of God he is not a Christian no more I wonder how many of us left Christians you know the irony some people they lie at themselves and they think that they are the best of the world when all of us we are sinners and all of us we do wrong So my friend if you are a truthful Christian you do what Jesus want not what a priest want many priests they are doing businesses they will tell you only our churches people will be saved ask yourself is that really real what does that mean who are you I will not be surprised if this priest he will be the same as Muhammad who take the money and go vacation from your money and go vacation in Hawaii but yet he is preaching about God and they have a very fancy clothes and houses if you go and read the life of the Apostle of Jesus you will see how poor they were but imagine those people those men who they have a power of the Lord who they can do miracles in his name how much money they can make imagine if I now I can make somebody come back from death how much money I can earn every day how many kings will kiss my shoes every day but yet they die very poor and they die after humiliation they were killed they were tortured they never ask for payment those are the true Christians anything else is not real a one he preach about you about Jesus and the love of Jesus but he is driving an expensive car he have a very fancy house and there's tons of thousands of Christians in Africa they are dying from hunger right Jesus did not even own a donkey you don't he owned nothing. So, my friend, division always come from the devil, and whoever promoted division, he is from the devil. We might not agree about some issues, but is that is very normal. God, He made us different. But God, He unites us in one thing the fruits. Jesus said, From their fruits you shall know them. So let us say you are a person who believes that you like to have a picture of Jesus in your house. I believe if this is for the sake of art, it's fine. You believe, no, it's more than an art for you, it's to present Jesus for you. All right. But let us say, I believe that pictures are not right but I do evil and you believe that the pictures are right and you do good which one of us is better which one of us is better in the eye of the Lord you made a picture which as I believe wrong because you love the Lord not because you hate him I refuse a picture which is right but I do evil so you are better than me because even the evil you did was good which people accuse you with you did evil which is loving the Lord to the point you want to make a picture of him 
which is wrong because the Bible says don't make images of what is above on down on earth so I believe it's wrong but even that wrong happened because you love the Lord not because you hate him but someone else he don't believe in pictures but yet he do wrong and he do all kind of evil which one is better so the Lord he said from their fruits you shall know them not from the pictures not everyone says to me Lord Lord but the one who do the will of my father so you have big shirt, I don't have big shirt, she have big shirt, she don't believe in big shirts. Let us see our fruits, and that will be our competition. We will be known by our fruits, not by our stupidity. Fighting over those things is the stupidity. Fighting for good to do better fruits, that is smart. So let us say you are a Catholic, I am Protestant, or vice versa. What about we compete about who can do better to serve Christ? That would be wonderful. Not to compete in insult, an accusation. What about we compete to serve mankind? Jesus says, I was hungry and you did feed me. I was thirsty and you give me a drink and I was sick you visited me i was in in a prison you, you came to me i was i was a, a i was a, a, a foreigner a stranger and you took me in so for us christianity is not a sect christianity is a life and this life is containing the fruits you can call yourself whatever you want but jesus will not know you from your name he will know you from your fruits you can wear a big cross in your chest, but you might be a drug dealer or even a pimp like Muhammad, and you will go to hell. So it is not what you wear, it's not what you say, it's not what you call yourself, it's not a name you hold, it is a fruit you carry and you do. And this is what is a Christianity for me. In the other day, a guy, he made a video against me, and he is so upset. Christian Prince, he said that the father is the son. I mean, what this guy is talking about? I, I, all what I'm saying that God is one, and I'm explaining to the Muslim that we believe in one God. We don't believe in three gods. But I did not say what he's saying. But look, they are so angry suddenly. And they are the one who want to defend the faith. But this guy, he never brought one Muslim to Christ. You know, some Christian, they remind me of uh, the Muslims sometimes. Like, you know, uh, suddenly they are conservative when they are not all their life. This is why in my program here, I don't like people to speak about Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. Keep your faith for you. Don't tell me about it. Because simply, the devil, he will try to divide us and he will use those names to divide us. And by the way, Muslims, they go inside the chat rooms and they play Catholic and Protestant. One of them will text as a Catholic, the other one will text as a Protestant, and there's many fools, they fell into the trap. Or you are wrong, or you are pagan, or etc. And the, the list of the fool they follow right away. Right? I am smarter than that. <clears throat> you see, Satan, when he said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself. Christian, don't listen to Jesus, what Jesus said. They throw themselves. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So when you challenge someone from different, let us say he's a Christian, but let's say you're a Protestant or a Catholic, and you ask him to prove himself by throwing throwing how throwing, throwing him out of the cliff, and you say to him as if you are saying, Well, if you are a true believer, okay, don't die. 
is the same as a Muslim saying to me the Bible says if you drink poison nothing will kill you but this is not what the Bible meant we know that the Messiah himself was crucified so we die our Lord himself died the disciple of Jesus were killed this is not what the verse meaning so sometimes some Christians because they are victims of their leaders church leaders they are blind and they follow the blind and the devil is very powerful my friend Jesus said be aware of false teachers false prophets they come to you in a clothes of a sheep so the devil can come to you in a sheep clothes can can come to you as a priest as a bishop as whatever you want but at the end of the day the devil is a devil and for me when I see someone dividing the Christians he is not speaking for Jesus as simple as that if I ask you now what do you think Jesus will be happy to see that Christians are not one church I think you know the answer right I'm sure you know the answer inside your heart so it's very foolish to say my church is right and the rest are wrong I mean, this is really a sign of foolishness and stupidity. The right person, my friend, is the one who served Jesus. And how to serve Jesus? To be a servant. That's what the Bible says. You can't be a master if you can't be a servant. And this, this is why we see Jesus. He said to them, let me wash your feet. They said to him, what, what do you mean you will wash our feet? You are our Lord. He warned them, if you don't let me do that, you don't belong to me. So my friend, you want to be in competition of who is a Christian? Serve. Don't be the same as the Jews who throw rocks when they are adulterous themselves. They are fake, they are hypocrites. They speak too much about the good God when they are the most perverted people ever. And actually, I notice always that those who try always to preach too much speaking, you see, some people, they say to me, Christian Prince, you don't speak like a Christian person. I said, why? They said to me, you are tough, you are harsh, etc. So what does a Christian person mean? Oh, Jesus said, if somebody hit you in your right cheek, give him the other one. Really? Jesus said that? Yeah. Uh, okay. And that means that we people can beat us, right? Yeah, sure, sure. No, this is not what Jesus said. That's absolutely false. Through centuries, they try to preach to us something is not true, which is Jesus taught us that we can be, anyone can beat us and we will not defend ourselves. Jesus did not say that. You see, every time have its own law. And one of the Roman law that if somebody hit you in your left cheek, he go to jail. So all what Jesus was saying, we live in a we we live in a ruling system. We have a police. We have a court. Even when they want to kill Jesus, they could not just kill him. They brought him to court. So we have a system. So if somebody want to do violence with him, would you use the law? Don't be a violence. Don't fight evil by evil. But there's nowhere in the Bible it says that you can defend yourself. This is about using his hand, not somebody want to kill you. Somebody want to insult you. Are we listening? But you remember Jesus, he said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy his garment and buy one. What? Jesus says that? Yes, Jesus says that. Why he's asking them to buy a sword to defend themselves, not to defend him. This is why we see when the soldiers they came to arrest Jesus, Peter he have a sword with him. Do you think Jesus do not know, did not see that Peter he have a sword? There's a huge difference between carrying a sword to kill and carrying a sword to defend. It's a noble job to defend the weak. What if I am walking in the street in the middle of the night and saw a man trying to rape a woman? 
what I should do as a Christian I will start saying our father art of heaven I will tell him that Jesus said if somebody hurt your right cheek give him the other one or my duty as a Christian to defend this woman and stop this man from his crime which one you think present Christianity If you don't defend this woman, you are not only the Christians, you are the enemy of Jesus. Because the one who don't stop a crime, he is a criminal. And you should use all kind of ability you have and mean to stop that crime, including violence. Because here you are defending this woman, you are not being evil. Don't fight evil by evil, which mean, you know, don't do the same as that guy. But stopping him from doing his crime is not doing the same as he do. You are doing something good. Anyway. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Today it looked like it's very slow today. And until now we did not have a one Muslim. Anyone? My friend, there's nothing is called leaders and uh, wrong. Wrong. Anyone can do wrong. The Catholic, they believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They believe in the resurrection of Jesus. They believe in the crucifixion of Jesus. They believe Jesus is coming back. Okay. They believe he is the Son of God. So what is left? You want to fight over a picture? Go ahead, fight over a picture. So show, show us how smart you are. I mean, we don't want to be silly, but you see, when somebody uh, looking for a fight, he will find a reason to fight. Once there's a, a guy, he is fighting with his wife, and they ask me, you know, like they said, things is going between us bad, like, and and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm very close to both of them. They said to me, "What what do you think the reason?" I told them what happened. If like you want me to involve, it's your it's your it's your problem. Why I should be involved? But okay, tell me what happened. So the guy he leave when he drink coffee, he leave his cup in the coffee table. He don't take it to the kitchen. His wife she said to him one thousand times, "Don't leave it there." But do you think this is really the reason of the fight? No. I'm sure this guy before he used to leave the coffee cup there, and she used to call him, "Honey, let me clean it for you." But there is other reasons, but people define the silly reason to fight. They don't talk about the real reason. They told me the silly reason. I said, I don't believe really this is the reason you, got, you both are fighting. There is something behind. So you, you sit together and you talk to each other and tell me, you, don't tell me because this must be very private. There is something both of you are angry from each other. It's not the cup of the coffee. If you are really both in love, you will not fight over such a silly thing. So when we are not in love with each other, we will find any silly reason to fight. But if we are in love, even if I bring break your window, you will say, don't worry, I will replace it. Do you understand me, guys? So let, let us love each other, and then you will find that our differences are not really important. Someone said to me, the Catholic, they pray to Mary. That's a lie. They don't pray to Mary. They ask Mary to pray for them. Go and read uh, uh, Hail Mary. I don't know how to recite it perfectly, but the Catholic, they know it by heart. But they are repeating what is written in the Bible. When the angels, they came to Mary, they said to her, Hail Mary. Our ignorance is amazing. Pray for us. 
some they say that the Catholic they asked that they'd want to pray for them. My friend, the Bible says that saint resurrected with Jesus. Who said they are dead? And who are you to decide who is dead, who's alive? There's many saints to raise with Jesus. And the Catholic and the Protestant, sorry, the Catholic and the Orthodox believe that Mary was resurrected. So, and they are not praying for her, they don't worship her. Stop being a don't lie. For me, I believe I do not need to pray asking somebody to pray for me, you know, like let us say it's not really a must, but we can do that. I mean, how many times we hear ourselves saying, Okay, pray for me, guys. My uh, my brother is uh, sick or my son is sick or my wife pray for me Nothing wrong with that None of them worship Mary none of them believe she is God None of them believe that she is one of the Trinity. Have you ever heard of a Catholic believe that Mary is uh, Like there's Mary the father the son. No, they believe in the father the son the Holy Spirit as simple as that So please let us be smarter and let us be educated. Enough is enough. All right. I love the Catholic. I love the Protestant. I love the Orthodox. All of them, for me, they are Christians, wonderful ones. I don't know how many of you went to Orthodox library as an example. They have the most amazing libraries ever you can imagine, full of knowledge and deep studies. But the Catholic are almost the like one apple is cut two pieces with the Catholic, but nobody attacked the Orthodox. Why? Because all of this is based on history and politics. They did not face problems with the Orthodox. This is why they attack always the Catholic. But the Orthodox is almost half of the apple of the Catholic. Anyway. Yeah, and actually the name, the name for us, all of us, is not Catholic, is not a Protestant, is not Orthodox. The name was given to us as a Christian. You see, in the in the Middle East, when we say, I say, I'm a Masihi, Masihi from the word Masih, which means Messiah. I'm Christian. And this is name used for any, all of us. There's nothing that's called Catholic. Nobody says there, if you ask him, what are you? They don't say I'm Catholic. Nobody say I'm Orthodox. We are united. But do you know why we are united? Because of discrimination. Discrimination make us one with Jesus. And maybe you people need some discrimination. So you might understand. Do we have any Muslim here? Hello. Hello. We hear you, my Hello. friend. Go ahead. Yes. Christian Prince. All right. Hi. Um, I just want to clarify. Hmm. Introduce yourself, Do my you... friend. Yes. Right. Um, Do... Can you yeah, can you sure. mute YouTube? Can you mute YouTube? Yeah, I'm gonna mute. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna mute. Can you hear me now? So we'll go. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I just want to clarify. You know, um, with respect to Catholics, because um, mm. it was obviously you were discussing it in your live stream. Mm. So, do you believe that Catholics are Christian? Absolutely. But in what sense? Uh, Jesus, he told us who is the Christian. The Bible says, the Bible says, who is the not, not Christian, whoever deny the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Whoever deny yeah, the cross of Jesus, what? the Catholic don't deny the cross of Jesus, don't deny the crucifixion, don't deny the Trinity, uh, don't deny the coming of Jesus, they do not deny the virgin birth. What is left? Yeah, but being Christian is also in your practices. 
So when What's wrong with their practice? What's wrong with their practice? What is the practice you are talking I'm about? I'm not saying there's anything wrong in their practice. The ritual you I'm mean? I'm not saying there's anything wrong in their practice. Okay. I'm not here to criticize. Hmm. I'm just here to 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 to, to optimize everybody. It's not, it's not about criticism. It's not about bringing anybody down. Okay, no problem. What, what, what's, what's wrong with, it, with the I mean, Catholic? Why the Catholic will not be Christian for you? Well, let's just, let's start from the beginning. Hmm. First of all, with their beliefs with Jesus, they don't believe that Jesus is actually God. My That's friend, number one. my friend, this is a stupid thing of of you. Don't ever call me again. I don't have time for stupidity and lies. Who is the stupid idiot? He told you that the Catholic don't believe Jesus is God. Give me the name of the donkey. Because okay, no, no, no. Okay. Give me the name of the donkey. Who is the donkey? He said to you, the Catholic don't believe in Jesus as God. I'm talking I'm talking from my personal experience then my friend don't talk to me don't call me again I have no time for the devil what personal experience is the Catholic is a bicycle you can take a ride over it's a belief their books is there you can go and read it stop being a donkey I pray to God that he will never be a bishop because of the bishop like this imagine what the church will be you see this is what I hate I mean I hate lies you see if the Catholic are wrong I would say they are wrong that's it as simple as that I mean who care honestly Jehovah's Witnesses I say they are cult Mormon I say they are cult I mean I'm not I'm not taking a side of anyone. I, I'm just saying things as it is. The Catholic, they don't believe Jesus is God. What a big fat lie. You see, when I lose my patient, I can't take it no more. <laughs> and by the way, each time, each time, I say to a Catholic, don't attack the protestant the catholic he, he he get upset from me and he stopped donation to me and each time i say to a protestant don't attack the catholic the protestant he get upset from me and he stopped donation to me go both of you i don't want your donation go please go i am not for sale here we go the pope is an antichrist yeah, Obama is Antichrist, Trump is an Antichrist, George Bush is an Antichrist. Get lost out of here. We don't want donkeys. Do you know even what the Antichrist is? If you know the Bible, you should not say that, my friend. Antichrist is someone, the Antichrist, first he will be from the nation of Israel. Antichrist in general is someone deny the Father and the Son. So if the Pope believe in the Father and the Son, that's mean you are a fool. And yes, he believe. So how the Pope is an Antichrist? I mean, who is the donkey here? Anyway. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul here? Any Abdul? Yeah, the Bible says either you are with the Lord or against the Lord. We, all of us, we worship one God and we glorify one name. And we pray, all of us, our Father out of heaven, the Catholic, the Protestant, the Orthodox. Maybe you do not know that. Do you know that? Maybe many ignorant do not know that. That the Protestant and the Orthodox and the Catholic they pray exactly the same prayer our father out of heaven And that is a prayer taught to us by our Lord the Messiah himself Go study the prayer and you will know What is making us united? Our father art on heaven Do we have any Abdul? Any Muslim? You see, do you know why why the Muslims get upset from me? Because I don't allow the division between the Christians. 
and by doing that the Muslim they cannot find the win window they go through you see when a hacker he would hack your computer he find he need to find a weakness on you you know what I mean so what is the weakness of this man how we can divide the kingdom the same as they did one day and they occupy the Constantinia why because at that time the leaders of the Christians they were fighting each other bring destruction to yourself the more you are divided the more the Muslims can take over you good for them But not in my, not not for me. Wherever I go, that will not be that will not be accepted. And I don't care really who agree with me, who don't agree with me. I am the last one. I say things as it is. Since I was a kid, I don't care really. Um. So today we don't have Muslims. My friend, you are asking me to translate videos into uh, Malaysian language as if I speak that language. How I can do that? But you can do that. You can download the videos, load them in a channel, and add subtitle. You can do it. Do you think Prince uh, Christian Prince he speak all language in the world? Everybody is asking me to translate it. I ha I have even nobody to help me. Everything I do by myself. I need to write my books. I need to make videos. I need to answer people. I get thousands of questions, and then I need to add languages to the videos. I, languages I don't even speak. Do some work. Help me, help yourself, help your people, help your nation. Get the blessing of the Lord. If you translate a video into your language in a certain topic, you know, uh, uh, you will get the blessing because simply it's, it's your work, not my work. <coughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, how you doing, CP? You okay, bro? I'm all right, my friend. How are you doing? Oh, fine, thank you. Yeah, Miss Amor, I called you the other day, the ex Muslim brother. Hey, Amor, how are you? Oh, good, brother, good, good. Just a little bit tired and relaxing, just listening to the knowledge you're, you're spreading. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to talk about, um, yeah, like we shouldn't divide each other. It's true that, you know, you know, some things that in the Catholic Church are, you know, like a bit weird, um, but they are still Christians. Um, the only thing that I have an issue with, I want your advice about it. You know, when they say that the Pope can, or the Father or the leader in the church can forgive their sins, could you explain it? No, no, they, they, don't, no they don't do that. Actually, the Pope himself, he confesses his sin every Sunday. He don't forgive True. sin. No, 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 they don't, they don't, they don't. You see, we have many, uh, many rumors and we believe in rumors, but we don't, we need to investigate before we believe in something. They don't. Nobody, not, not even a single Catholic, believe that uh, uh, anyone can forgive sin except uh, God and the Pope himself he could confess his sin okay that's good that's what it's true because what I do I just research about it and read no. you know, different people they opinions. you know people they make uh, you see when 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 the devil he want to be involved in dividing people as we see in the Quran chapter yeah. 5 the same chapter in front of us verse number 14 it says mm -hmm. that Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians and the judgment day yeah, <laughs> and you know this is the, the power of the devil. The devil he he don't want you to to be to open your door to to a Christian person and even to listen to him. So we start accusing him, and we don't want to listen. No, that's true because I've got a sister that I evangelize with, and she's come from a Catholic church, and she says like you know we don't preach about you know so much things, and she tried to warn people about hell and. You know, I need to talk to her properly. You know, I do believe they are, you know, Christians because you're right what you're saying. They do believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, and if there's a few things that are not right, I think that's just down to that particular person. Because um, there's been a lot of people that's had like you know bad experiences with the Catholic Church. But you know what? Before I, I heard you today, 
I had a different understanding about them. But the things you're saying actually make sense. Um, they believe in one God, you know, they're not pagans, they don't kiss a black stone and think it's going to wipe their sins away. Um, you know, I, I even this, actually. even this, you know, you might see someone yeah. is a Catholic, he is kissing a statues, but this is not yeah. Catholicism. This is something he do. It's not in the, it's not in the True. Catholicism that we should uh, pray to a statues or etc. People, they do things, people, because there's many people, they cannot get, uh, get rid of, uh, they do, they want God to be in the front of them. They want God to present in the front of them. And this is why they like pictures and like images. However, this is, you know, I can have an, a picture of anything. Uh, all of us, we have pictures, don't we? And yeah. you might have a picture of somebody from your family and instead you kiss the picture of somebody you remember. Maybe a mother or her child, he passed away, she kissed the picture. She is not worshiping an idol. So I love Mary. I love Jesus. I love mm. Moses. I love uh, all the good ones before us. Uh, and let us say I have a special passionate and I want to kiss the picture. For me, I believe this is wrong. First of all, yeah. we don't even know the picture. We don't have a real picture. True. Secondly, you know, the Bible forbid us in a religious way to make images of what is above or down on earth mm -hmm. to any uh, a person as long true, true. as long the purpose yeah. is to worship you know that's right so that's right. if we start worshiping pictures obviously it's very wrong yeah yeah it's true it's the people isn't it it's just it's the people look because there's uh, there's so much like really good christians like even the nuns you know the way they live and things like that but another thing i wanted to um ask you was um and obviously in the bible you know it speaks about um women shouldn't be preachers they shouldn't teach in the church but they should sit silent and they should wear head coverings um and, it, and and you know there's a lot of women pastors what do you think about that cp see here we see that the the catholic are more conservative hmm. from protestant but yet the the catholic are are accused <laughs> you know i mean you see how the, the double standard yeah. sometimes okay how come sure. how come you go letter by letter when you want and you don't go letter by letter when you want so when you yeah, want, yeah. they say, okay, we have to go letter by letter, and the Bible says don't make images, etc. So you are wrong. We, we will throw stones at you. Then the you know we have verses where it says that uh, uh, women uh, you know they should uh, not talk in the church, etc. However, for me, I believe that those verses is not meant that women they can't really teach. You see, the first teacher we have in life is our mothers. True. Because yeah, what it says, sorry to interrupt you, CP, because um, what it says is women can teach, but to teach their children and their family and sisters and amongst them. But it says, I do not, the Lord says, I do not forsake a woman um, to preach, basically, to be you know, a pastor in no, the no. church. And no, to women, be women, they can't teach. The no, no, women, they can't teach. Simply, you yeah. see, but yeah. uh, 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 let us make it simple. Okay. We are talking about generations uh 2000 years ago all right where yeah. men are the one who go to school women they stay home learning how to cook all yeah. right this is the tradition even in the jewish rabbi the rabbis is the one who go to school are male the whole school is a male there's no females so who is the rabbi it's a male but yeah. we will go and we will find in the old testament that there is judges all right and yeah. there's a prophets who they are females so yeah the, the same ver the same chapter speaking about women she cannot teach is the same chapter speaking about women they can prophesy yes they can prophesy right uh, with, yeah. with the head cover sorry yeah go on, go on. Yeah. you're the, right, you're the, right. Even, the, even that chapter speaking about the head cover is about the hair because the cover of the women is her hair the same chapter sure. is, is saying that so look what happened we we caught some time a verse and we stuck with it but we don't read what is after or before mm -hmm. and what I see that the Bible is full of stories about women teaching and yeah. speaking about yeah. Christ and you know and uh, uh, we will be and we will be naive if we believe that uh, uh, women are not meant to speak and, and to glorify God because the Bible is full of stories of, of, uh, of women who did that same time Mm. Uh, you know, in a strict society, man cannot teach women. 
because he yeah. is not allowed to be with the women. And the other day, when I was in Germany, I met with a woman. She was an ex-Muslim. Uh, yeah. And she was telling me about how she was able to, uh, like, to present Jesus to many Muslim women. But in this society, a man cannot be inside the, the room. Only women, they are there. Yeah. A man is yeah. not even allowed. So what does that mean? The Lord will not allow somebody to witness for them? So That's if true. we take if we, if we take the... the if we want to be like Taliban, you know Taliban, Taliban, they take uh, yeah. they take their Quran and they say it says etc. Let us do etc. And we, we don't need, need to use our brain. Christianity is not like that. Mm. Remember that no, Jesus I, himself I, he cometh through a woman. No, no, see, right? I totally agree with you. I agree yeah. that women should be able out to. I, I don't mind women outside, you know, evangelizing, uh, doing things like that. Because you know that like in Corinthians fourteen thirty four. Um, it says the women are to keep silent in the churches where they are no, but this is because women they used as uh, until now there's women who talk a lot and they cannot keep their mouth shut talking about cooking oh, and about oh. doing dishes and what your husband did. So, women, uh, come on, don't bring your you know, there's some many like this, they cannot control yeah. their tongue, they have yeah. to talk. Okay, women, she's now, going, you know, look, this woman she came in, she's late, and this woman, you know, they, they like to gossip. So, there's certain kind of women. They don't mm -hmm. they should not open their mouth in the church because they are speaking of something else This is why it says keep you to your you know to your discussion with your husband at home So they bring stories You know the, the problem is that yeah, you know, uh, we do not know, so right. we do not know what, what is the background is, If you do not know what the background of the story you think the story is about women. They should not talk you know? Yeah, because I'm trying to find but this is not about women. They cannot talk about women. They are coming uh, to talk in the church mm. Yeah no, 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 you're totally right. Um, you know, there's just so much things that um, we just need to understand more because every, everything I read, it's like before I was Christian, when I read the Bible, I didn't understand it. The words never opened to me, but as soon as I was a believer and the Lord came in my room and the Holy Spirit and everything happened, it's like the words just come out to you, you know? And brother, I just want to say that, you know, we, we're blessed to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, who has, you know, blessed all of us, you know, um, strengthened us all. And I just think there's so much ways you can look at scripture, just like the way the Muslims try to say um, Prophet Muhammad's in, in the Bible, and they talk about the songs of Solomon and all due to, I was talking to a brother the other day, so what I do, I minister, you know, evangelize outside, and, and I do online sometimes as well, where I go into Muslim channels and just, you know, <laughs> try to, you know, just talk to them and let them know the truth. They keep bringing up, it's like a copy and paste, exactly what you say, brother. They copy and paste all these different places. And I say to them, look, after about two days of talking to them, with all the evidence they've asked me, they stop communicating. It's it's just ridiculous. Like, I just really want the Muslims to wake up. And um, none of them dare to debate you because as soon as you embarrass them, they've lost all their followers. They're like they're like they're like the, the Jews around when Jesus was you know on the earth. Um, they're like them Jews that wanted to be the main people, you know. Oh, I'm the high priest, I'm the rabbi, and everyone comes to me, um, you know, for their problems. And this is how they are. They're, they're actually on a power trip. Do you know what I mean? Mm. <clears throat> A power trip, and I just you know I was out today evangelizing in the city center in London and. People are just, you know, really lost out there, brother, man. I'm just so much, I'm just, so much people have spirits in them. Um, they're just, they're lost in, they're doing so much things. And I'm just trying to give them the word and, you know, lay hands on people. Let yeah, Jesus but you see now, them. if we have women, they are going in the street and they are teaching, nothing wrong with that, you know? No way, no way, of course not. Yeah, so, we you know, we need to reach out and everybody, every believer have a tongue, glorify the Lord, he can use it. The issue yeah. is that women they should be smart and they should not go to places they are not should to, to go. As an example, yeah. women she go inside a jail full of men, they did not see women for, for maybe a year. That is a stupid, <laughs> you know. You don't yeah. go there, they will rape you. They will I not mean, understand that you are a, a person bringing love and God to them. No, that is not smart. A woman she want to go in the desert in the middle of nowhere to preach the gospel, that's not smart. There's criminals, you know, they are women. So women, they should go where they can go. This is why you will see that disciple of Jesus, 
they prefer not to be married because simply their life is full of risk and mm -hmm. they travel from place to place so this is why when you serve God uh, you know uh, you know that you are you are going to be in danger and danger will follow you a woman yeah. she have more she is more target just because she's a female she's a, she, she's a target just just because of that so True. a Christian man who is just because he's a Christian he have he is a target but now because you are a Christian and a female the target became too risk so mm -hmm. women they should be in a place where it's safe and secure and they can preach but they don't lose their dignity you know yeah that is fine no, no, no. but it going, makes, makes going to places where it's not right for them to be that is not smart and this is not biblical also CP I have another question you know the way the Muslims pray I researched that you know I was researching research and reading a few um, comments where the Jews actually prayed that way and the Muslims um, learned the way they prayed and no not exactly only... no not exactly it's, it's not the same but Muhammad is a copier of everybody yes. around him he copy the abolition from the Sabi and he copies some how, how to pray from the Jews you know how much people he sent to hell do you know how much people have gone to hell believing he did that not send, he is no he did not send anyone to hell people they send them yeah, people, I know, but but through his teachings, my friend, uh, stupid people they go to the stupid teaching based on their decision. No one make you stupid except yourself. For God I gave know. us all a brain, and He gave us guidance. So if somebody decide to follow the the, the uh, a false prophet, this is his fault, not the false of the fault of the false prophet. But yeah. obviously, so also like you know the way the way the early Christians prayed. I do believe they prayed with their heads on the floor because I think it's in Revelation. My friend, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And, no, no, doesn't matter yeah. really. This is you see, we don't want to be the same as the Muslims, and we start thinking about. No, no, we don't. No, no, brother, yeah. we don't. Who cares about how to pray? Jesus no, said, I'm "Don't be the same as the hypocrite. Just... Go to your closet." Nowhere, and Jesus. Pray. He taught us how to pray by moving hands, That's and right. this is not really right. I mean, who cares? I mean. Let me no, ask you: they, What they, if I want to pray to God sorry. and I am naked? No, see, Why not? One thing. You know what I mean? Why you not? Know, God, He see me naked anyway. My clothes does not cover me from God. <laughs> you know, know what I mean? I, really, this, this, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying, but there's, I think there's a verse where it says Jesus went up to the mountain and put his face to the ground and prayed, yeah. and also the elders in Revelation, the elders and the angels. Um, you know, the elders took off the 24 elders, peace, mm. be, peace be unto them, and the angels took off their crowns and basically put their head down to the ground to worship God. So I know what you're saying, as in it's not about that. And we're not copying Muslims because Muslims actually copied that from the early Christians. Um, yeah, but this is not know. this is not a necessity of a prayer. You see, all of this is symbolic. I think it's uh, respect, really. I it's think it's not symbolic. What, you can pray standing, you can pray sitting, you can bow down. You can do, mm. you know, you do whatever you wish. You can pray mm. when you are asleep. You can pray when you are in bed, uh, because yeah, a prayer true. is always it's welcome. And uh, there's, you know, uh, it's not a ritual where it's um, with certain move. I mean, okay, what if I don't move my hand in a certain way? My God would not hear me. Uh, what yeah, if yeah, I don't stand? Muslim, yeah, this is not. When I was Muslim, when I was Muslim, it was such an annoying OCD, like. Oh, it was just ridiculous. Like literally, you step your foot down on the floor after you've just done wudu, and you're like, "Oh, I've got to do it again." And it was just, I was just watching the way my dad was all the time, and you know what? It's just sickening. It's really sickening. I, seriously, like just seeing it throughout my whole life, just seeing the whole, like even going into the mosques and seeing the way. That, you know, they, they handle themselves. It's like, you know, every single person in the mosque, you don't see one person talking to another person. Everyone is there in like a single, singular prison. And it's ridiculous. And before I found Christ, you know, I was, I was researching Shia and Sunni and trying to find out the truth. And, you know, I, I am so blessed. All of us are so blessed that we've got Jesus, bro. And mm -hmm. people like you who are doing this, because look, you doing this, you're actually putting your life at risk as well. Even though no one knows how your face looks like, but you're putting your life at risk. And I, you know what I'm doing, I'm putting my life at risk because according you know, to these crazy people, we are we're preaching hatred. And obviously, because I'm an ex-Muslim, it's apostasy. So what I said to Muslims is, you say there's, um, you say if you kill one person, it's like killing the whole of humanity, right? 
but then you want to go and kill someone because they left Islam. How does that make sense, CP? Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, you know, at the end of the day, we need to remember Christianity is beyond ritual, and uh, um, you know, God is not about uh, uh, you know the Jews. Actually, they, for for centuries, they understood God the same as the Muslims. This is why Muhammad he took a lot of things from them. You know? <laughs> and this is why Jesus, you notice Jesus, he said to them, is not what go inside the mouth, make you dirty, what it come from the mouth, you know? True. So the, True. the Jews, they have the same understanding of the, of, of the Muhammadan about what make you dirty. And Muhammad, mm. all the time, he was trying to be a Jew, actually, you know? That's why we see tons yeah. of stories in the Quran is copied from the Jews. And this is why the Quran became so funny, you know? He is using what is written in their uh, uh, heritage books fairy tale stories and he used it as authentic stories for God and this is why he turned to be uh, stupid and people until now we are making fun of him because he didn't hmm. believe in the Jews you know uh, you know some, though, some people think way, yeah. some people think just because the Jews are people before us they are right but the Jews they have a lot of wrong teaching and you know sure. uh, and uh, and even the Bible speak that the Jews been punished by God many times for they left God and they forsake God, and nothing will you know change. What? You know the Jews, the Jews before yeah. they did that, and I think in the future it might happen again. You know what? I I was ministering to a, a Jewish man. His name is David, right? And he's not really religious anymore. But I went to his house. I was praying for him. He had, you know, had a, he had a spirit, and um, he showed me his Jewish um. Bible translation. You know Isaiah where it mentions, I think it's 9, 6 or 53, I, I totally forgot but it talks about a son is born and a child is given. The government shall be in his shoulders and shall be called Prince of Peace, Mighty God Everlasting Father. Basically their one doesn't say that. They've changed it. Right? So where it says um, in their one it was written in English like English alphabet writing but it meant it was just something totally different. So it's like they're trying. You're right. There are some Jews that are trying to hide the truth. No, from let me tell you. Like the, when, when they the, say in the Old Testament yeah. that the the like in our book in in the in in our Bible it says the virgin will give birth. The Jews they say in the Hebrew it doesn't say the virgin. It says a young woman. But remember, the Bible is speaking about that. A woman, she she will do the a miracle will happen to her. So if a young woman she gave birth, that is not a miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's normal. Yeah. I mean, every day millions of women they give birth every day. So this is a sign will not be repeated again. You know. So True. what is the sign? It if it, even when they try to fabricate interpretation or translation, they say, oh, it says a virgin. It doesn't say virgin. It says young woman. So what is the sign? If a young woman she gave a birth, what is a sign about it? Obviously, she is a woman because it, because in no way a, a female she can give birth unless she is a woman. A virgin, no, a, no, woman, a, woman yeah. a woman, which a woman means she can get a breath in it, you know. So, uh, uh, but if she is a virgin, that is a miracle. But if just just a young woman, well, there's tons of young women every day around the earth they give birth to uh, to uh, to a child. So where is where is the miracle here? Uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't work and you know but uh, but remember that most of yeah. the Jews at the end of the day the majority of them they became a Christian already we're not talking about three days Jews we are talking about some of the Jews yeah it's true not all of the Jews it's just some of them that no no the, the, ma the majority of the Jews they are already Christian the minority they are not I know they, the early Christians <laughs> were Jews yes you know? the early Christians were Jews you're right the they first were, Christians uh, are Jews yeah exactly exactly the first Christians the Jews and um, also like the way I look at it is, is um, Islam is actually look, exactly what you said it's, it's copied it's copying the Jews then it says it hates the Jews um, you know it copies the Christians and it hates the Christians like you know it just doesn't make no sense what they're doing and the reason why Muslims won't leave Islam because they look at the West as a whole as Christian even if you see atheists going out dressed naked and you know people just doing drunkness and things like that they see that as Christians my friend nobody leave Islam as much as Muslims because let me let me explain to you and maybe you are getting it yeah. wrong you are from yeah. you are you you are coming from a Muslim family 
and yeah. uh, you witness the Muslims. If you go and see drug dealers, you will see high percentage of them are Muslims. If oh, you, you see, killed it, you killed if you go right. and check the prostitution business, you will see a high percentage are Muslims. If you mm -hmm. if you go and check the the scam and the uh, fake passport, what do you want? I mean, Muslims are the one doing the business of all those things. Bro, so I used to have experience with that. Yeah, right, so what right. is the Muslims we're talking about? I mean, if the, if Islam bring decency, why we cannot find decency between Muslims? True. You know, True. they, they the you num know number yeah. one people who 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 uh, who ask for a credit card but then if I pay back, which means it's a theft, is Muslims. Number one True, people bro. who do illegal stuff in the world are Muslims. Number one people who uh, who sell fake or copy of uh, uh, software are Muslims. Uh, if you go to the jail in France, in England, what is the highest percentage in the population are Muslims? So if and it's and they still act religious, do you know what disgusting they act? They, you're right. They do all of that. But when it comes down to defending their faith, they've, all of a sudden they're a movement. And an I know, but this is this is this is proof that Islam is a stupid religion because how Islam made you a person of a crimes, and is yet you are saying to me Islam is a good religion. Exactly. How exactly. Islam make a woman work as a prostitute, you know, and then yeah. you, you know, know this, uh, you know this mata, you know this mata thing. Yeah? No, no, prostitution, and prostitution business is is a huge business in Morocco, in Algeria. I mean, go, go, yeah. not only uh, you know, go in the, go but, in the Middle East, go to Egypt. Habibi, I'll be honest with you. Before I was Christian, <laughs> I used, I used, to, I used to last a lot, brother. I used to go to Morocco. Actually, I'm being honest here. Yeah. Um, I used to actually go to Morocco and you know rent out apartments and things like that. Ever since the Lord delivered me, I've lost the sexual sexual morality is gone. That's how I know Jesus is the way. It's not one sign that convinced me to leave Islam. It was not one sign. It was many signs. I even said to the because I was I was watching YouTube and I saw many Muslims who've had encounters with Jesus. And I sat there and I said, you know what? Let me ask Jesus if he's the truth. I'm gonna, but before I got on my knees, I kind my heart actually believed he was. So I think it's, it's having that because a lot of Muslims they probably try to ask Jesus if it's true, but they don't have the belief in their heart. But I'm telling you, like the things, the miracles I've seen that Jesus do to people, like just the other day when I was speaking to you about my dad's leg stretching out and um, you know coming out three inches and people with internal bleeding and demons coming out of people. They, all this is Jesus Christ. It's nothing to do with me. I'm just I'm just like you know praying and asking for it, but. Brother, all these things that I saw in my life, I thought, not once have I seen a miracle as a Muslim. Not once. No miracles at all. All I see is anger, hatred. Um, there's no love. And then as soon as I'm a Christian, brother, everything has changed. My life, I can't explain it to you, my brother. Even people say I look different. My right. attitude is different. Like, Yeah, but you know, remember one thing. The reason we are talking about what... Uh, how corrupt is Islamic countries because they try mm. always to present to us the the nakedness of Euro, Europe and etc. Give a freedom, mm. the same freedom of Muslims in Algeria and in Morocco and in Egypt and in Saudi Arabia, and let us see the competition. Who is going to be more in nakedness? You know, they do everything in the world you can imagine. There's nobody, nobody in the world is lost as they do. But they speak too good about God, but in fact they are the opposite. The opposite. You know what? You know? TV, you're so right. And you know what's funny? Where are Muslims <laughs> most happy? I saw this in a comment on another video once. Yeah? This lovely person put up a comment, and they said, um, "Where are Muslims happy, and where are Muslims not happy?" So where Muslims are happy is in the West, Australia, England, America. They're happy, right? Where are Muslims not happy in their own countries? You see, so they, they they come to the West to destroy the democracy and the love and the peace and unity that we have here, right? They come to destroy that, and back home they they live in they're living in an, a big nightmare, basically. You know, I just think I just think you know if there's any Muslims listening right now, look, guys, I was I'm from Iraq and my mother's Lebanese Lebanese. Um, you know, we've been, I've been a devout Muslim most of my life, I've had a few haircuts, I re before I come to Christ, I researched so much, I even saw, you know, you know, when I said to you the other day, um, I watched other things, it weren't you that, in, that, that I listened to that converted me, I did listen to a few of your videos.
videos as well, not remembering, um, which helps. So it weren't just one person. I listened to you, many other people, um, debates between, you know, Shabi Ali and many other um, Christian scholars. And um, I just want to say to the Muslim, look, guys, come to the truth. Why are you going to risk? You're going to risk your whole life, the afterlife. Because I've got a friend, CP, yeah, and his ministry is stopping people that have died. It's called near death, right? They've died. He's in London. He's a great man. His name's Leon. The Holy Spirit tells him who to stop. And every person that he stops, they've had a near death experience. They've died. Some for 30 minutes, some for 10 minutes, five minutes. And when they die, their spirit has actually left their body. And I said, at first when I heard him, I thought, okay, he's got a few videos. But then when I looked and I was with him out, he's got over four or 500 people saying the same thing, CP. Like this, when you die, your spirit comes out of your body. You know, some people were taken to heaven. Some people found themselves through a tunnel and ended up in hell. And then the Lord came and took them out of hell. And, and said to them, go back, it's not your time, you know? So this is another thing, like, this is another See, thing. I, that I, don't, I don't really like to go in, in such a details because I don't know if people are telling truth or not, but I will leave what is the, to the Lord to the Lord. Whatever True. is after death, I will leave it for the Lord. Whatever it is, it is. I don't go by he said, she said. I go what the Lord will but do. CP, I, I respect what you're saying, but I was thinking like you, but then as it gets to 100, 200, 300 testimonies... doesn't matter, my friend. I can bring yeah. you now. I can bring you a 1 billion Muslim uh, make a testimony for Muhammad saying he's a prophet. No, my no, friend, but these are people that have died, bro. I, my my friend, saying. my friend, I understand. I'm not saying they are not right. telling the truth. I'm not saying that. But I don't want to go yeah, in, that, right. in that direction. I go yeah. by what my Lord said to me. Anything else is not valid for me. No, but you know why? Because my friend uses that to wake people up to say to him, he's actually no problem. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm not saying he is not truthful. I'm saying no, I, no, for right. me myself, I did not experience it. I did not witness it, and I cannot speak of it. And I will not teach such such a thing unless I'm sure. Yeah, as simple no, as no, that. You're right. That's true. It's true. I'm not saying that you know we should be teaching this, but all it is is that you know a lot of people do die and come back and. Um, what they've said they've seen, they've seen Jesus. So even Muslims, there's Muslims on YouTube that have died and come back here and they've said they've, they've seen Jesus and angels worshipping him in heaven and things like that. So this is maybe just another thing for Muslims to research as well, you know, because... I believe that the him... Lord, he have his way to call people sometime. Mm -hmm. And it might mm -hmm. happen, you know, the Lord, he, he is all-powerful. He speak to me in a way, he speak to you in a way. And yeah. it doesn't have to be the same way, you know. Uh, he is almighty, and he can do whatever he wish. Uh, anyway, my friend, uh, I see some somebody trying to call, so I want to say thank yeah, you yeah, get, get in for there. your call. Man. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for accepting the call. Thank you for talking, and uh, I will say glory to God, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. May he bless you and give you good health and every single listener. And I just want the Christians to unite. We're not part of any sect. Our sect is to be holy and followers of Christ. Um, let's pray regularly. Let's fast. Let's help the poor. And let's just, you know, if you can donate, donate to CP right now. If you can afford it. And yeah, God bless you, man. Peace, Thank CP, you. man. Thank you, Speak soon, brother. Take care. Thanks, man. Thanks, Kate. Bye, bye, bye. The one who is trying to call, feel free if you are calling me back. <clears throat> You know, uh, sometimes the, the Muslim they try to present to you that Christianity is a naked woman in the beach. The fact I never saw naked people as much as Muslims. They do everything and anything you can imagine. It's a very corrupt society. One of the things I don't like about the Middle East that in the Middle East, every, everybody speak good and do bad. Everybody speak about God. Everybody believe in God. Everybody pray to God. But everybody is corrupt. And the corruption expands not only for Muslims, even those who they are not Muslims, you know, because uh, even those who they are Christians, they learn from Muslims how to be corrupt. So they are so proud about themselves. 
but they do they do what what everybody do women they go and sleep around have sex but they don't say to anyone they had sex the women she leave in the morning she going to school she's wearing the hijab and she is the virgin mary she go to school she come back on time and everything is perfect and then one day she get married and she is still virgin everything is good so how she was having sex she do it in the wrong location or she do a surgery it's called virgin again or she buy a product it's called virgin again made in china it is something she insert in her private part in the wooden night she act like she is losing her virginity and the blood come out very corrupt society they always speak about western women how bad they are how filthy they are they sleep around but you go there you find it's the same thing and even more at least in the west they say what they do there they say the opposite and they do the opposite which means you do not know who is the decent who is not for sure I'm not saying all women there they do that but I'm saying generally speaking it's a very corrupt society the the grocery store is corrupt you cannot even buy a, a good a good tomato you can't even get uh, good potatoes the guy in the grocery store he put for you in the front the good tomatoes and in the back the bad one he is behind the counter so in the front of you you see very nice tomato he, he said to you uh, how much you want you say two kilograms you cannot pick them yourself so he pick up the bad ones he put them in the bottom of the case which is a paper you cannot see and then he put two or three in the top who they are good you go home you find that half of what you bought is going to be thrown in the garbage In America, they open a grocery store. <clears throat> Always when you buy from a grocery store owned by Middle Eastern like me, you have to be careful. Look next to the cashier machine. If you find a cigarette box, if you find matches, if you find, be careful, he will not add it. What they do, many of them, they put next to the uh, cashier machine, let us say, uh, a box of cigarettes. And then you go and you pay for your grocery and you leave. Now, many of people they don't when they when they buy, they don't check what they what they paid for. If you check, you might find that he charged you for Marlboro, Marlboro uh, cigarette. But you did not buy Marlboro. You go back, you say, Hey, you charged me for this. You say, Oh, look, you see, it's here. I thought this is for you. I was going to call you. And then he take it off the same the same box of cigarettes he charged it for the 1000 customer before you his beard will be long he's a person of religion he's a decent man but yet he scam everybody in his way now for sure not everybody do that but you have to be careful from such a scam so we witness hypocrisy always That's why actually I respect Western more because even when they do what we call it bad, at least they don't hide it. In the Middle East, we do the bad things, but under the cover. So we wear burqa, we praise God, and we have sex under the table. <laughs> you know what I mean? They are holy under the sun. They are hookers under the table. There is a there is a Canadian woman she converted to Islam. I don't know how many of you have the video. If somebody have the video, post it. Her name is Foxy, a crazy woman. She converted to Islam. She is Canadian, and then she got upset. She made a video about a virgin to be virgin, and then she said those Muslim women they are not virgin. They sleep with everybody, so they are insulting her because she's Canadian. She is not virgin. You know she slept with many guys before. But she's saying, in fact, they slept with everybody in town, but yet they are virgin. How they are virgin, they are doing it in the wrong location. I don't, I don't know if any of you have the video. Yeah. Uh, uh, but be careful, she speaks a very dirty language. So she converted to Islam and she is exposing the Muslims, uh, uh, Muslim women, 
how they are accusing her not to be a virgin when none of them is a virgin so this is a virgin society but nobody in the virgin society is a virgin it's a it's a corrupt society they speak too much about being good and being virgins and being decent you know you go you go and they uh, like they say to you a priest he molests children Muhammad himself is a child molester a molest a priest a, a priest who molests children he will go to hell and even in, in jail in America a child molester mostly he got killed inside the jail because even criminals they will not have mercy on him even criminals they will not let him go through your prophet himself is a child molester Anyway, we don't want to judge a religion by just by people because there is people bad and good everywhere. Let us judge a religion by the founder. Was Muhammad a child molester? Yes. Was he a rapist? Yes. Was he adulterous? Yes. And he was proud about it and he claimed that God gave him permission. So we are not going to judge Islam by someone who is a Muslim and he is a rapist. No, this is not a scenario. We judge Islam by Muhammad himself. Was he a good man? I challenge the Muslim to say to me, he was a good man. And I will show you from their own books how bad Muhammad was. Actually, I found an old video, but this is not really the whole video. Uh, I wish I can find the old, the, the old video. But let me pause this video for you. This is a very old video of mine. Somebody have it, so I will pause it for you. Uh, uh, you know, by the way, the first when I started making videos, I used to use a camera to capture my computer screen. I remember I used to have a very old computer and I bought a camera. I bought a computer uh, camera just to record my screen. And those videos are the first to be shown in the Iranian government TV. They made a study uh, of what is called Islamophobia. And the Iranian TV choose my video from all the internet. This is the video about this woman I told you about, but this is not the one I want really. But she is talking there. <clears throat> uh, let us see. Yeah, I don't know if I can find it. Anyway, so they, uh, you, you will notice there the video I have is very old because I was recording the screen and by using a, a camcorder. Not like now, you know, technology a lot better, computers a lot better. I remember to go in the internet, I have to like dial 1,000 times. Sometimes DSL doesn't work. Sometimes it's stuck. Sometimes it was horrible. <coughs> And if you want to load a, a video, it take you forever too. I yeah, know. Maybe I will not be able to find it. I yeah, know. Anyway. Let us see. Iranian. yeah it's hard to find any video of mine anymore because it's too many do we have any muslim would like to call us Any Muslim would like to call us? How long did it take you to learn how to use the internet? I don't know. I mean, 
I remember first time I turned the computer on, I did not know how to turn it off. <laughs> I hit the bomb, it turned on, and then I hit the same bomb again. I thought it's the same as the electricity switch. You know, you hit it up again, and the computer will go off. But this stupid computer is not going off. So I hit it again. It's still not going off. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we start learning about computer and I said to myself this is something wrong with this computer I bought this computer for a lot of money for this is chip it it's not even turned off man you know like what <laughs> because you know like this is the way we know how electricity work right you have a switch you hit it here and it turn on and then you turn it off you hit the same switch off and it's not turning off so what I did I just unblock it all right. <clears throat> okay. Do we have any Abdul? <coughs> any Abdul would like to call us? You know, uh, first time I I uh, I joined university. And when I when I like attended the class first class, I was late. I was late like to attend the the school, which means I was late in registration, etc. So the doctor, the professor, he said, uh, "You better find a group and join them." Okay, I said sure. So after he finished, I have a girl next to me sitting next to me. I do not know anyone in the student yet. So I said to her with my funny English, "I want to be with you." And then she said to me, "I am a lesbian." I said, okay, nice to meet you. <laughs> Second day in the morning, I saw her in the cafeteria and she was in the other side of the room. I said, hey, lesbian, how are you? She came to me like crazy. She said, what, what, why are you are saying that to me? I said, what? I said, why are you are saying to me, hi, lesbian? I said, what's wrong with that? Isn't this your name? She said, what? I said, well, yesterday I told you I want to be with you. I was talking about being in the group, you know? So she thought I'm asking her for a date. <laughs> so, and you said to me, I'm lesbian. Isn't it, this is your name? She said, what? <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, lesbian, how are you? What a stupid idiot. I'm just asking you, the, doc, the the professor in front of you, he said, you need to join a group. And I said to her, I want to be with you. She said to me, I'm lesbian. I mean, who is a stupid here? So second day, I gave her a shower. <clears throat> Any lesbian here? Anyone? Any two? Yeah, that's why I said to her, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you she did not get it star moon how are you star moon are you a muslim my friend <coughs> are you a muslim any abdul Yeah, actually, English is very funny. Especially, you know, if you carry two languages and sometimes some words, they have totally opposite meaning. And Abdul. No one? Today, not even one Abdul. You believe it? Looks like broadcasting earlier is better to get Abdul calling. I think we can get Abdul from the Middle East, here now only from America. Uh, a star moon, I, uh, I want you to deliver a message for this guy, Ramazan, my friend. Tell Ramazan tomorrow I will make a video and he better get his ass ready because I will spank him so hard and I will make it red. Can you please deliver the message? 
tomorrow. Not next week, brother. Tell your friend Ramazan. Very hard. <clears throat> he made a mistake by, you know, they added subtitle to their video in German before. I do not know what they are saying about me, but now they have a subtitle for their video, <laughs> which will make it fun to get them busted. <clears throat> yeah, Ramazan, Ramazan. Hmm. And Abdul and the coward, he don't even dare to call me. He don't dare to call me as long you can, as long you can uh, expose a Christian prince and Christian prince is a liar. He was saying in his video, Christian prince, he spread bacteria. We will see tomorrow. We will see if he refuted me. Don't forget to watch my video tomorrow. So we will laugh. <clears throat> yeah. Any Abdul? Do you ever want to talk to Imam Tawhidi? Imam Tawhidi will never get close to me. Imam Tawhidi is a taqiyya man. He is a he's a hypocrite liar. <clears throat> Any Abdul? No. All right, guys. Look like we are done for today. No more Abdul here, and uh, I hope we learn something good for today. And I hope tomorrow we will do better. Tomorrow I will do broadcast maybe in the other account, Christian Prince. If somebody have the account, please post the link. If somebody have it, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, if you go to this account, please, you can subscribe to this account. This is an account I use. This is a second account. Please go here. And don't forget to subscribe. Tomorrow I will do mostly live broadcasts using this account. I might use uh, uh, Arabian Prophet too tomorrow, but uh, there are certain videos I try to use them there. Those videos, if I'm using a material of different person, because, you know, they flag me. So I use other accounts. <clears throat> Just open that account. Uh, okay, uh, Star, uh, don't talk about gays, my friend. Your prophet, he pissed like a woman, and he received Quran in the clothes of a woman, and he put eyeliner three times a day. So if you are against gays, I mean, how you follow Muhammad, my friend? All right, Abdul? As long as you hate gays, isn't it your prophet he put makeup every day, three times a day on his eyes? He want to be pretty? And he wear his wife clothes? And he piss like a woman? And he kiss men down their belly? Let me see who's calling me. <coughs> Call me please only if you are a Muslim. <coughs> Any Muslim? Mayday, Mayday, any Abdul. All right, look like we are out of them. All right, guys, thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you tomorrow again, Christ is Lord and Islam is false, made by a false man for the silly one. If you are a silly, wait for the God who provide you versions, big version, big private parts, brother. And as you know, Allah is Akbar, which means Allah is bigger and size does matter in this cult. Everything in this cult is about size, not about fruits. Thank you very much and see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.